It was 2021. On the outskirts of the capital of the Czech Republic, in the city of Prague, the first tower was built. Unexpectedly for everyone, the tower caught fire, and the residents of the capital thought that the end of the world had come. One year later, almost the entire world was destroyed, except for the five towers that spread the light of kindness to those around them. It was precisely such towers of kindness that were considered the only salvation for humanity from extinction. The tower that appeared in Seoul was no exception. For people, it has become a new world, a place for survival. But none of the people were interested in why and how the whole world turned into ruins. Everyone wanted only one thing, to get to the top of the tower. Without wasting a minute of time, people tried to climb to the top of the tower. But only those who managed to rise above everyone else were rewarded with wealth and fame. The names of the lucky winners were engraved on the top of the tower as constellations. It was the constellations that were close to revealing the secrets of the towers and were the support for subsequent generations. Humanity waited for the constellations to fill the world with light. So 36 years passed. A young guy named Baek Ho Min woke up among the corpses of his team with the thought that he was the only one left alive. The exhausted and hopeless guy was on the 89th floor of the tower, not knowing whether this was the limit or not. Baek Ho Min noticed the corpse of the Platinum Monarch, who sacrificed his life for him, but did not understand why he did it because it was so pointless. Suddenly a hiss was heard and a snake appeared in front of Baek Ho Min. The guy was perplexed that after so many attacks, the snake still remained alive. Thoughts about his dead comrades forced Baek Ho Min to find the strength within himself and fight the snake. The angry guy wanted revenge for the death of his friends. The only thing that could be read on his face was, die. Suddenly, instead of a snake, two black figures appeared before the guy's eyes, the great wizard and the alchemist. Baek Ho Min was confused. His eyes couldn't see well and he couldn't understand where the snake was or what happened to it. The guy thought that these two black figures were from another tower and tried to attack them. The black figures, in turn, made fun of him, calling him a newcomer of the physical type. The guy didn't like this. He was furious and attacked the black figures with even greater anger. Then the great wizard could not stand it and attacked the guy in response, wanting to beat him. The guy calmed down a little, but questions were still swirling in my head. What kind of place was this and what happened to the snake? In response, the great wizard and the alchemist began to reproach Bek Ho Min for his dying words, for the fact that he considered death the only way out, and for the fact that he decided to make a post-mortem breakthrough only on the 89th floor. The guy was shocked how these two figures knew everything about him, and in his defense he assured that all his comrades were killed. The wizard could not stand it and kicked the guy, considering him a useless piece of garbage. The alchemist tried to stop Mr. Wizard, insisting that everyone experiences humiliation at the moment of death. The angry Mr. Wizard shouted that if this guy had found the seal left by the Platinum Monarch, then he would have been able to kill the snake. But instead, the guy decided to kill himself. Baek Ho Min, listening to this, could not believe that he could kill this snake, that there was a real way that he could save his comrades from death. The guy begged the black figures to confess who they were, how they knew everything and what he needed to do to defeat the snake. In order for the guy to regain his sight and see their faces, they poured sacred water over his eyes. And a miracle happened. The guy's eyes began to recognize silhouettes. Soon he saw two people in front of him, or rather his past lives. During the conversation, Baek Ho Min learned that he has the ability to be reborn. But after each rebirth, memories are lost and all achievements and successes are annulled. The black figures decided to tell Bek Ho Min about their achievements. For example, that the wizard joined the Circle Guild, where he received the title The One from the Tower, and the alchemist was part of the Alchemist Guild, and the Tower awarded her the title Dynamite. But these two figures were not considered to be the only past lives of Bek Ho Min. There were more of them, but only these two were interested in current life. The wizard and alchemist were sort of unconscious, receiving memories formed before returning, and their next rebirth was supposed to reach the level of constellations. Finally understood why these two black figures were so angry. This was their curse, and they hoped that their next life would be smarter. To the realization that his life had come to an end, and he was also doomed to watch his next lives here. Suddenly the guy began to experience a strange sensation. This has begun the rebirth. 
Baek Ho Min heard his name and opened his eyes to see an angry friend named Hyun Soon in front of him. Baek Ho Min told his friend that he had communicated with the great wizard, but Hyun Soon, of course, did not believe it. A little later, Baek Ho Min's consciousness began to return, and he realized that he was on the fourth floor of a tower in Seoul, where he had the status of an ordinary 20-year-old guy working for a loan shark. Thus began another story of a new 20-year-old guy. The goal of the new team of the fourth floor, in which Baek Ho Min found himself, was to search for engravers, hunters with seals. Suddenly a scream was heard. One of the hunters saw a graver and decided to fight him, but was bitten on the hand. Under such circumstances, the only solution was to cut off the bitten hand, since it could no longer function anyway. The team began searching for engravers, but Baek Ho Min and Hyun Sun were most interested in why they were looking for a certain engraver that the elder needed so much. The elder was the name given to a well-known moneylender in the city, the head of the orphanage. It was he who took Baek Ho Min in when he was ten years old. The search for the engraver was dangerous because they could apply strange seals, and with them the person would receive shitty opportunities, after which no constellation would pay attention to this person. The new seal is the skill and opportunity to start living like a hunter. Through them, the constellations can choose and train their successors. Baek Ho Min and Hyun Sun were afraid of meeting this engraver because more than ten people had suffered from him. It was in Baek Ho Min's mind that his dream of becoming a hunter depended on his meeting with the engraver. Their thoughts were interrupted by Hyun Sun's shout that the same engraver was standing in front of them. The engraver was furious at the persecution, so he immediately engaged these guys in battle. In the battle, engraver managed to melt Baek Ho Min's sword and damage his hand. But even under such circumstances, the guys managed to catch and tie up Graver, who begged for mercy. During the battle, Graver lost his gold coins. The coins were unusual. They depicted the seal of a constellation. While Baek Ho Min and Hyun Sun were looking at the coins, Engraver managed to free himself and grab Baek Ho Min's hand. This maneuver was done in order to reward Baek Ho Min with a seal of crappy skill. At that moment, Hyun Sun hit Engraver on the head with a stone and he passed out. The seal he received from the Engraver awarded Baek Ho Min the fourth level skill Memory, which helped solve problems of the present using experiences from the past. The subconscious world began to shake, and Mr. Great Wizard's body began to disappear. The wizard's body was placed in Baek Ho Min's body, which led to changes. Knowledge that Ho Min did not know began to burst into his head. The Great Wizard was dissatisfied with the skill he received and decided to fix everything by convincing Baek Ho Min to believe in him and himself. The seal began to change its pattern. The tower erupted in light that blinded all the people. The seal has been changed and the synchronization rate with the constellation, the One, has been increased. The Great Wizard returned to the subconscious world and revealed why he had disappeared for a while and that Baek Ho Min had acquired the fourth level skill, Memory. But this skill, according to Dynamite, was not that good, since the owners of such a skill were either killed or died of disease. The Wizard assured that this time Baek Ho Min would not die but rather would become their hope. After all, memory is a strong skill with which you have a chance to climb to the top of the tower. But only thanks to the wizard this became possible. The altered seal gives Baek Ho Min the skill to use all the memories of members of the subconscious world. Baek Ho Min woke up from severe pain in his arm and remembered that he had received a fourth level seal with some incomprehensible memory skill. Various thoughts were spinning in the guy's head telling him that a bright future awaited him and that he would be able to climb to the top of the tower. Suddenly, Baek Ho Min's thoughts were interrupted by the elder, who came to congratulate him for capturing the engraver and for the gold coins. The elder said that these gold coins were the currency of the future, which were planned to be released next month, but the engraver managed to counterfeit them. Now the elder needed to find out everything about the seal and the acquired skill of Baek Ho Min. After hesitating for a long time, Baek Ho Min finally spoke about his memory skill, which aroused suspicion and distrust among the elder. He decided to use truth serum. Baek Ho Min woke up in a tent on a bed. He remembered that the elder wanted to interrogate him and injected him with truth serum. At the entrance to the tent, the elder and chief hunter, Kang Kyung Hu, were talking about Baek Ho Min's skill 
and what they planned to do with the counterfeit coins. Beck Homin began to realize that the elder did not believe him and was even ready to kill him. Something had to be done, and he remembered his skill. Having unlocked his dynamite life skill, he began running around the tent and confidently collecting various bottles of chemicals. By mixing all the liquids together, Beck Ho Min created a poisonous gas that quickly spread throughout the entire tent and beyond. When the elder saw the smoke, it was already too late. Beck Ho Min managed to escape. The elder was furious. He could not understand how Beck Ho Min managed to escape. He was determined to investigate the guy's seal by any means necessary. The elder's plans were interrupted by a knife put to his throat. When asked by the elder how Beck Ho Min survived the poisonous gas, he said that he dug a hole and covered his head with soil. Having tied the elder by the tree, Beck Ho Min demanded from him a salary in the amount of 175 million won for all his work done, for robbing street vendors, for searching for money in landfills, for taking strange medicines from the laboratory. The elder was shocked by the ingratitude of this guy and the fact that he decided to suddenly kill. But he gave Baek Ho Min a silver coin that could be exchanged for money. For attempting an attack, Baek Ho Min knocked out the elder, and in order to stay alive, he decided to kill him. Suddenly, a hunter from the elder's squad ran out of the bushes and Baek Ho Min had to run away. Baek Ho Min noticed a wound on his leg from the hunter's arrows and decided to immediately drink the miracle remedy so as not to die. The hunter was sure that this remedy was an antidote that would not have time to act on Baek Ho Min, but it was a stimulant thanks to which Baek Ho Min gained strength and attacked his opponent to kill. The three from Baek Ho Min's subconscious world rejoiced at his victory. They decided to put all their strength into him so that he could get to the top of the tower. The elder was furious that Baek Ho Min managed to escape by killing his hunter subordinate. The elder and Kang Kyung Hu were ready to devote all their efforts to searching for Baek Ho Min, assuming that he would hide on the fifth floor of the tower. Baek Ho Min, Recovering from the fight with the hunter, was thinking about where to hide so that the elder could not find him. To spend the night, Baek Ho Min found himself a cave, where the first thing he did was uncover the backpack he had stolen from the hunter. Found in the backpack were so-called items that have special abilities and are divided into categories. Common, rare, relic, and superior. An oil lamp, a painless dagger, a toblin canopy, all these items were inside the backpack. Baek Ho Min slept well all night thanks to the Toblin canopy that protected the entrance to the cave. The wound on Baek Ho Min's leg has almost healed with the help of Dynamite's chosen life. Out of curiosity, Baek Ho Min decided to try his skill to the fullest and see what he could do. So Ho Ming learned that when Dynamite activates life, he already knows how to prepare a healing potion, medicine or ointment for wounds, and protection against parasites from plants and insects. If you activate the nameless skill with life, the physical ability to kill is activated. But every skill has a price and a side effect. After killing the monster, Huo Ming's seal began to burn. This is how he learned that the cost of his seal was overheating. It became clear to him that for the correct use of a skill, a specific goal is necessary, and the emotional state affects the synchronization indicator. Having checked the synchronization indicators, the guy was confused since the life of the one, chosen only once, had the highest percentage of similarity, which could indicate that the one also changed his seal at one time. Huo Ming originally thought that his seal was useless since no constellation chose him. But the constellations, the one, the nameless, and dynamite helped him everywhere, for which he thanked them very much. At this time, in the subconscious world, the one threw a tantrum. He was angry that Huo Ming only used the skills of his roommates. Nameless and Dynamite insisted that the one has the highest similarity to Beck Ho Min, which is why he copes so well. The only one was glad to hear this and agreed with them. He suggested that for a closer connection they needed to establish communication with Huo Ming. Talking to the guy, according to the one and only, is possible thanks to the memory skill. But for this, you need to change the seal. The price of such manipulation will not just be overheating of the skin, but it's melting. The constellations decided to act and the one got to work. For the third day, Baek Ho Min walked to the tower and behind him there were already three battles with hunters sent by the elder. The angry hunters and the elder could not believe how a simple guy could cope with hunters without the necessary equipment. The elder could not contain his anger and scolded senior hunter Kung Kyung Hu for their mistakes. Such treatment was not allowed by the hierarchy of the tower 
and this led to the elder being demoted to the bottom floor. Beck Ho Min reached the entrance of the tower, and now he had to climb to the fifth floor. Following him were hunters led by Kang Kyung Hu. Suddenly, the senior hunter saw traces of the parasite near the tower and immediately realized that Ho Min did not climb to the fifth floor but ran away. Following the tracks, the hunter caught up with Ho Ming and invited him to walk with him in an amicable way, otherwise he must kill him. But Ho Min did not intend to give up. He activated his life skill, Martial King. The battle began between the hunter and Ho Ming. The hunter's strength was so great that the acquired skill was not enough for Baek Ho Min to win, so he took a stimulant. Ho Ming's physical abilities were improved, but only for five minutes. In the subconscious world, the one attacked the warlike king with reproaches. The battle could not be allowed to end with the death of Ho Min. In justification, the martial king said that he became powerless after taking the stimulant. The time has come to activate the enhancement of the seal that the one has prepared. The new seal could bring pain to Huo Ming's hand, but there was no other choice. Ho Ming had to win this battle at all costs. Ho Ming's strength was running low and the effect of the stimulant had ended. The guy began to suffer from lethargy, a disease accompanied by slowness and fatigue. All this played into the hands of the senior hunter. He launched an attack and swung his weapon at Ho Ming. Fortunately, the sword hit the backpack, which burst into light from the oil lamp and pushed the hunter away. At this moment, Ho Ming was able to reactivate his skill with the life of the martial king in order to finally kill the hunter. But Huo Ming's hand began to burn madly. To get rid of the pain, he stuck a painless dagger into his hand, the same one stolen from the backpack of the killed hunter. This allowed Ho Min to feel his power and kill Kang Kyung Hu by stabbing him with a knife. After the battle ended successfully, Ho Ming felt guilty. In his thoughts, he asked someone to tell him that he was not to blame. His wish came true. A message came that the constellation The One liked him. The constellations of the subconscious world rejoiced with joy because The One was able to improve not only the seal, but the entire system. At the same time, all three constellations, The One, Dynamite, Martial King, liked Baek Ho Min. The likes flew at the speed of light. Baek Ho Min was happy about this. Now he knew that the constellations were watching him. Ho Ming's wrist was burning from using the seal for too long, so he asked Mr. Dynamite for help by activating the skill. The medicine was prepared. It allowed Ho Ming to rest from a hard day. The next morning, the pain in Ho Ming's hand was gone, and messages with likes from the constellations kept pouring in and out. Then Ho Ming suggested that the constellations send likes if they answer the guy's question positively, otherwise not send anything. Ho Ming thought that he had not heard the names of such constellations before, and there is a possibility that they are not so famous. In the unconscious world, Dynamite was not happy with the method of communication the one had come up with. After all, such messages did not allow the transfer of more information, but there was no other way out. Beck Ho Min was studying the synchronization with the Martial King when he suddenly heard a strange sound. A huge mutant spider appeared before his eyes. It was the future boss of the floor, the Black Forester. Beck Ho Min began to receive likes from the constellations, who were talking about him entering into battle with him. The guy couldn't believe it, but still activated the skill with the life of the Martial King and the experience similarity of 34%. The similarity of experience suggested that Beck Ho Min would enter into battle with the mutant and instinctively know about his weak points from the experience of the Martial King. Thanks to experience, the battle ended in Ho Min's victory. But this was not the end. Another mutant spider, much larger than the first, appeared before Ho Ming and captured the guy. Having dragged Ho Ming to his lair, the spider tied him up with a web from which the guy was able to free himself using the overheating seal on his hand. In the spider's lair, all the eggs were empty, which indicated that the spider had devoured its relatives to become the boss of the floor. In order to escape, Ho Ming now had to fight this spider, but he only had spider claws and sticks as weapons. After checking the synchronization indicator with the Martial King and seeing the figure being 100%, Huo Ming could choose a reward for increasing the indicator. The list of rewards included equipment, skill, characteristics, memory. In the subconscious world, a dispute broke out between the constellations. Everyone had their own opinion about which award Baek Ho Min should choose. Baek Ho Min chose his equipment. 
The Constellation equipment of excellent quality that the guy chose has unimaginable properties and can only be obtained after the death of the Constellation or by inheritance. The only one was furious with Huo Ming's choice. He did not expect that among all that was offered, the guy would choose some kind of equipment. After examining the spider's lair, Ho Ming found his dagger and decided to use it to kill the spider before it finished molting. But the mutant spider finished molting and attacked Ho Min. Without being confused and remembering the previous fight with the spider, the guy decided to aim at a familiar weak point. But it didn't work, and his blade broke. The seal on Huo Ming's hand was burning and reminded him that the skill would soon end. There was still hope for activating the constellation equipment. The equipment was activated and now in the guy's hands was an excellent blade blazing with fire. Master of ten thousand swords! It was with them that Ho Ming managed to kill the spider boss. After the victory, all Beck had to do was take the loot, a piece of gold. The purpose of the gold was to change the seal. It can only be found in the parasites that are in the tower. Gold forms inside the parasites like kidney stones. Activating his dynamite life skill, Ho Ming decided to deal with the spider's body. A rare shadow kidney stone was found in the spider's body, which is worth about 400 million won. Ho Min was immensely happy about this find. He felt like a rich man being on the lower floors of the tower. The guy decided to sell this stone, but first to cut the connection with the elder by killing him. After traveling for half a month, Ho Min finally reached the first floor of the tower in Seoul. What surprised Baek Ho Min the most was that there were no elevators in the tower, and there were a lot of hunters. Seeing a little beggar boy, Ho Min decided to find out from him everything about the eyes of the elder, and in gratitude give him a silver coin. With the help of the information received, Ho Min found his friend Hyun Sun, who was now the elder's subordinate. Hyun Sung told his friend that there are many hunters on this floor, since Platinum Monarch has blocked all the elevators for security reasons. There are rumors that on the 14th floor of the tower, there is a beast that brings misfortune. The Platinum Monarch is the ruler of the Seoul Tower who controls the entrances and exits. Hyun Sun was surprised that Ho Min managed to disfigure the Elder's face and kill the Elder Hunter himself. He was interested in what skill his friend had. Then, Ho Min said that he was not going to stop there, but wanted to kill the Elder. Hyun Sun could not believe what he heard, because after killing the Elder, the Spider Leg, his friend would have to kill both the other legs and the Platinum Monarch. But Hyun Sun decided to propose a different plan of action, not to kill the Elder, but to rob him. The Elder, according to Hyun Sun, had a safe in a secret room in which a ledger with loans and a gold bar was kept. Hyun Sun offered to throw the Elder out onto the street so that he could become homeless and his enemies would return his debts. After weighing the pros and cons, Ho Min decided to listen to his friend's plan. Hyun Sun revealed that the real reason the Platinum Monarch blocked the elevators was to prevent the engraver, who was once pursued by the guys, from escaping. After all, it was he who stole the design of the new currency. The Elder wanted to buy back the coins, so the Monarch closed the entire tower just to find this engraver. Hyun Sun's plan was to frame the Elder using a stolen gold coin, spread a rumor about the appearance of a currency with a new design, then the Monarch will immediately appear in the city. After thinking for a while, Huo Ming decided that if they forced the Platinum Monarch to act, then neither the Elder nor the Spider would care about him, and he agreed to be in business with his friend Hyun Sun. The friends agreed to discuss the action plan in more detail a little later. In the meantime, Huo Ming decided to go out into the city to visit a drug den. The purpose of the visit to the drug den was to sell the available items. Huo Ming did not need money. He wanted to exchange his items for a knife. The seller showed the entire range of knives that he had. Ho Ming divided the knives into two sides, good and bad, surprising the seller with his good taste. Among all the knives, there was one rare screaming knife, which emits a sharp scream with each swing. But Ho Ming's decision was to buy all the bad knives and take the remaining amount in money. The seller did not like this idea, and he offered to take this rare knife instead of money. Ho Ming's plan worked. He, of course, agreed. At the appointed time, Baek Ho Min came to meet his friend, but the elder and the hunters were waiting for him along with Hyun Sun. Huo Ming guessed that something might go wrong. Now he has lost his only friend. The elder decided to show virtue and invited Ho Ming to work for him for 20 years. But Ho Min explained that stealing the safe is only an alternative. He aims to kill the elder. Inspired, Ho Ming was ready to kill the spider, the godless paladins, and even the platinum monarch. 
This behavior made the hunters laugh. They considered Baek Ho Min to be too self-confident. The elder got tired of listening to this nonsense in order to kill and bring the hand of Baek Ho Min. Having activated the Master of Ten Thousand Swords skill, Ho Ming entered into battle with the hunters. The sound of the screaming knife that Ho Ming used deafened the hunters. Blood ran out of their ears, and the office became dark. But as expected, the sword immediately broke. Baek Ho Min then activated the Martial King life skill, and the real carnage began. Ho Ming used his knives purchased from a drug den, killing the hunters one by one. The body that Baek Ho Min trained now responded to the Martial King's feelings, and he could feel the fear of his enemies. Even with the use of their skills, the hunters failed to catch and kill Ho Ming. On the contrary, Baek Ho Min killed everyone except the Elder and Hyun Su who escaped. The constellations in the unconscious world were in disbelief that Baek Ho Min had killed so many people in such a short period of time. The constellations remembered that soon a new problem should await their Ho Ming. After killing the elder, this damn woman appears. Ho Min found the elder, injured at the hands of Hyun Su. In order to stay alive, the elder offered Ho Ming two gold bars, as well as participation in the grandiose spider plan, which would involve the entire tower. Huo Ming could become one of the spider legs. Ho Ming decided to agree and already activated the dynamite skill in order to save the elder from death. It was too late. The elder lost a lot of blood and died. From that moment on, the strong relationship with the elder was over, Huo Ming thought. How unexpectedly they appeared, godless paladins. The paladins looked at Ho Ming's body and wondered how such a cute guy managed to kill so many people. Yun So Hyun, the platinum monarch, appeared before Ho Ming's eyes. She said she was investigating a case involving counterfeit coins, which were a serious threat, but Ho Min solved all her problems. After the death of the elder, Spider decided to remain on the sidelines, thanks to which the Platinum Monarch was able to confiscate the money earned by criminal means. The Platinum Monarch was grateful to Huo Ming, but could not save him from the death penalty for killing eight people. She offered him two options, to stand trial and be executed, or to pretend that he was the monarch's personal hunter. Ho Ming's choice was obvious, although he understood that his life was now completely at the disposal of the Platinum Monarch. To voice his decision, the guy decided to consult with the constellations. The answer in the form of a light came only from the Martial King. The Platinum Monarch also promised Ho Ming a monthly payment for hunters, housing in the ruler's castle, and a discount on improving the seal. Ho Ming agreed unconditionally. In the subconscious world, the constellations discussed their experience of meeting the Platinum Monarch, and what consideration now awaits Baek Ho Min. Since Dynamite had a skill specializing in alchemy and was a member of the guild, he managed to avoid this fate. The only one got a good skill, and he took revenge quickly without relying on the Platinum King. Other Baek Ho Mins who failed to prove their worth were ignored or killed by the Monarch. A Monarch is a person who puts price tags on people and uses them as she pleases. The Martial King constellation believed that he alone was unlucky in meeting the monarch. He quarreled with the monarch because of her cynical attitude. After all, she sacrificed herself to save the warlike king, considering his life more valuable than her own. Therefore, constellation Martial King is the only one who liked it. Baek Ho Min woke up in a beautiful room in the palace, and standing in front of him was the woman who was with the monarch yesterday. The woman said her name, Executioner Dahl. This name was given because the woman was like a soulless doll, cutting off people's heads. She became the head of the order when the monarch became ruler. The doll gained its reputation through its ruthless attitude towards criminals. Baek Ho Min couldn't believe his eyes. In front of him stood the same executioner doll that saved three children at the crime scene. She is a hunter. She is the only person who is close to both the constellations and ordinary people. She is a hero. Baek Ho Min was unstoppable. He listed all the merits and advantages of the Executioner doll, her fight with the beast alone, killing one of the spider legs, preventing the poisoning of water supplies. In response, the doll reminded Baek Ho Min that he single-handedly managed to kill the elder and his subordinates. From the conversation, Ho Min realized that the Executioner doll was trying to find out useful information for himself and arrange an interrogation, although the monarch promised the opposite to which the doll said that despite the fact that he was recognized as the ruler's hunter, no one could free him from interrogation, not even the monarch. 
It followed from this that the godless paladins do not depend on the rules of the tower and can engage in lynching and reprisals. The doll began the interrogation by asking whether Ho Min had visited the security zone on the outskirts of the tower. Beck's answer was negative. The second question wanted to find out how such a defective seal, on which there were no signs of improvement, allowed the guy to kill so many people. Ho Ming said that he was helped by constellations, such as dynamite, which, perhaps by pure chance, reached unimaginable heights. To which the doll replied that this is possible if Beck is the prophet, the youngest constellation that rose to the active constellations with incredible speed. Or Beck became a parasite in the tower, which made it possible to execute him, despite the fact that he was the ruler's hunter. Beck could prove his humanity only with his seal, which would disappear if he were a parasite. They decided to continue the interrogation in the monarch building. At this time, the monarch was busy with justice and execution. She executed An Wu Hyun for attempted murder and three counts of assault. Killed Kim Lee Bin for arson and murder. The last one was Lee Du Gang, theft and murder. After the execution was over, the executioner doll asked permission from the monarch to use her courtyard in order to test Huo Ming's skill through grappling. But instead, the monarch invited Huo Ming to demonstrate his skills himself. For such a matter, she had one of the elder's subordinates, a former friend of Hyun Sun. At this moment, messages with likes from constellations began pouring in like an alarm signal. The monarch came close to Huo Ming and began to speak in his ear to tell the constellations to calm down if they did not want to die. Next, the monarch asked to show the guy her seal. The seal on Huo Ming's hand turned into platinum instead of iron. The time has come for Hyun Sun to be executed for theft, violence, obstruction of justice, and for attacking the ruler's hunter. In this case, the execution will not be carried out by the ruler himself, but by a new hunter, Baek Ho Min, who will demonstrate his skills. The monarch gave only one sword to help and gave orders to her former friends to start the battle. Of course, Hyun Su was the first to rush to the sword. Grabbing it, he attacked Wo Ming. Beck couldn't understand why the fight was with his friend and not with the doll. He assumed that the monarch was waiting for him to use his skill. But this did not happen. Beck decided to fight on his own. Ho Min grabbed Hyun Su and told him to escape, or else he would still be killed by the monarch. The friend agreed, but at the moment X, he attacked Ho Min. Another betrayal by Hyun Sun angered Ho Min, and he killed him. The monarch was happy with this outcome of the battle. An important quality for a hunter, according to the monarch, is quick and unwavering determination. This is exactly what Ho Min proved. The monarch congratulated Ho Ming on his successful mission and on his status as the ruler's hunter, presenting him with a platinum coin. But she still didn't fully understand Huo Ming's motive for hiding the skill. Feeling the touch of the monarch's hands, the guy realized that he had never felt such a gentle hand. In the subconscious world, the constellations wondered why the monarch was behaving this way. They assumed that she fell in love, but remembering how many Beck Ho Min's died because of her, they couldn't believe it. The constellations wondered what the monarch was up to, why she interacted with Ho Ming Seal. It seemed to them that she knew about their existence, since the name Dynamite had already appeared in front of the monarch. At this time, the monarch asked Ho Ming in more detail about the Dynamite constellation. The topic of Beck's seal was also touched upon. It was not made of gold, so it could be fatal to the body. Previously, Monarch had applied a coating to his seal, which stopped the poison from spreading and allowed the seal to activate longer. Now the seal will operate for two minutes and will not heat up much. Baek Ho Min considered the Monarch to be his savior, but at the same time made him fearful. The Monarch promised to strengthen his seal if he told everything about the dynamite constellation. Ho Min, of course, told everything he knew. There were many inconsistencies in the story due to the fact that the names of other constellations could not be mentioned. It was also unclear why Dynamite was helping Ho Ming. The monarch went on to explain the reason for closing the tower. The fact is that some huge anomaly happened in the tower. Several unknown constellations have been spotted. In general, you can become a constellation by getting five stars through fame and success. Therefore, it is difficult to believe that unknown constellations appeared out of nowhere. There is a suspicion that one of these constellations is dynamite. After the appearance of such constellations, the monarch had to make structural changes in the tower, blocking the elevators. Without these changes, zones and parasites that were supposed to exist only on the upper floors would begin to appear on the lower floors. 
The monarch decided to introduce Bayek to another of her hunters, who had just completed his investigations and would be able to teach Ho Min everything important. The ruler's hunter's name was Kang Ha Jin. He was the same age as Bayek and had been working for the monarch for two years. Upon meeting, Ho Min realized that Kang Ha was not very happy about such a meeting. But this was the ruler's order, so Kang Ha had to take care of Ho Min and first show him his room. Beck liked such a clean and warm room with a fluffy blanket. Kang Ha started talking about the platinum seal, which, as it turned out, was received not only by Ho Min but also by Kang Ha. He had it in his eye. The ruler's hunter also said that a platinum coin is equal in value to ten gold coins, but only the platinum monarch can create it. Platinum is used only for symbolic purposes, so its value is higher than gold. It took three platinum coins to seal Ho Ming, plus another coin went to buy medicine to treat him. If for some reason Beck ceases to be the ruler's hunter, then the monarch will exchange all his body organs for platinum. With this story, Kang Ha wanted to tell Ho Min that there is no point in hiding your abilities, but you need to give it your all to prove your worth. Kang Ha will observe him 24 hours a day, living in the same room with him, and make a report on his personality. In the subconscious world, the constellations were discussing another meeting with Kang Ha. For some, he was a reliable comrade. For others, he was a dog and a pervert. But most of all, the constellations were worried about structural changes that they had not encountered before. Looking up at the sky, they saw the star signs changing. Due to rebirth, the constellations disappeared from the world, but their stars did not. It is not surprising that people are shocked because they see constellations that are not there. These are the eight stars of dynamite. Here are the seven stars of the Martial King. This is the star sign of the Great Wizard. The constellations knew that Ho Ming would have a hard time. Since the monarch would test him until he showed his skill, Kang Ha aimed to get rid of him, and the doll was waiting for the opportunity to execute him. Kang Ha told Ho Min the plan of action. He and his mentor have already managed to explore four floors of the tower, which can now be opened for the elevator to operate. Now they have to explore the fifth floor of the tower. Huo Ming did not like this plan, since there is no way to return from the fifth floor until you reach the tenth, plus a nasty company in the person of Kang Ha. Approaching the cave, Kang Ha showed a secret elevator that would take them to the seventh floor. Having boarded the elevator car, they moved in an unknown direction. Since this was the main feature of the elevator, Kang Ha reassured Beck, because this was not the first time the elevator had been used, and if something went wrong, it would be precisely because of the structural changes that they needed. And here is the sign. The rails for the elevator car have been destroyed. From this place, the hunters began their exploration. Suddenly, they heard a noise and saw a horde of cockroaches. They had no choice but to start killing them. After managing to kill all these parasites, Kang Ha asked why Baek didn't use his skill. Ho Ming found an excuse that his seal was overheating and he was risking his hand. Kang Ha didn't like this answer. He attacked Baek Ho Min, reproaching him for his carelessness. He said that everyone except his mentor was killed a year later for the same reason. In two years, he buried more than five fellow hunters. One was killed by a parasite, and the other was eaten because he could not kill a comrade who had turned into a parasite. But Kang Ha's stories did not convince Baek. He was sure that he could not carelessly show his skill and talk about constellations. It was important for the constellations that nothing was known about them. Dynamite reasoned that if Ho Min talks about his memories, then everyone will know about his fact of rebirth. The monarch may not like this, and then she will either kill Baek or try to steal the skill. Huo Ming didn't like being forced to use his skill. Kang Ha hoped that Baek would leave the ruler of his own free will. He was even ready to repay the debt for him. Baek Ho Min did not like such thoughts and attacked his mentor. In a fight, obsessed with victory, two hunters fell off a cliff. They landed in the fundamental tower, ground floor of the tower. The foundation of the tower, or in other words, basement, dungeon, consists of zones to which light does not reach. The Executioner doll said that in such a place you can become a parasite. And it turned out to be true. If the hunters do not get out, they will turn into parasites, since their skin has already begun to feel some changes. Constellations in the subconscious world assessed the Foundation as a place of testing. The Great Wizard, at one time, was there in search of traces of past constellations, and the Foundation was like the annual ring of a tower. The Constellations knew that if the hunters failed to get out of there, they would face a test that humanity had ever faced. The foundation of the tower was cold and uncomfortable. 
The hunters were in the elevator area. It's like a wormhole in a tower. There is no exact information on where to exit. The guys had to hurry so as not to become parasites. On the way, Ho Min asked why Kong Ha was ready to pay his debt to the ruler for him. Kong Ha was silent, then Baek suggested that it was a matter of love and his mentor liked the monarch. Kang Ha began to deny this assumption. He valued the Platinum Monarch for saving his life and was therefore willing to pay the same. Ho Ming did not believe his words. He was sure that the mentor liked the ruler. He offered Kang Ha a deal that Baek would praise him in every possible way in front of the monarch and the mentor in turn would talk about Ho Min's skills. Their conversation was distracted by a bright light that came from a hole in the wall. Entering it, the hunters saw a sword stuck in the mirror. This place was connected to the guardians of the tenth floor. Guardians are an obstacle that allows you to climb higher in the tower. But after breaking it, a barrier appears that does not allow creatures from the upper floors to go down to the bottom. The hunters reasoned that having captured the guardian, his territories were transferred to the possession of people if they managed to pass the test. The sword in the mirror is most likely the item of the hunter who subdued the guardian of the tenth floor. It was not recommended to touch this sword. But Ho Ming was drawn to him, and Constellation the One sent him a like like a sign to touch the sword. Beck did just that. At that same moment the light went out and the hunters were thrown a long distance. A huge number of their own reflections appeared in front of them. Kang Ha realized that the guardian of the tenth floor was a mirror butterfly, so there were reflections everywhere. Past constellations have had a hard time with this strange ability to create a large number of reflections. In order for the hunters not to get confused and kill each other now, they had to kill their own reflections. To find the mirror butterfly and stop the effects of reflections, Kang Ha activated his skill. The skill worked and Kang Ha noticed the heart of the mirror butterfly. But because of the complete darkness, the hunter was unable to pierce her heart. The butterfly knocked Kang Ha off balance, but did not kill, but headed towards Baek. The mentor told Ho Ming that the reflections are formed from the dust of the mirror butterfly, and it urgently needs to be killed. The butterfly distorts its reflection, and if you look at it, you lose your balance. At one time, the constellation of Crushing Dawn Ripple found a way to defeat the butterfly, but only after the loss of two of its comrades. In her experience, it is necessary to fill the space with blinding light, and then all the reflections will be broken. The hunters decided to repeat her experience and began to look for that same sword. In the subconscious world, the one justified his like. Thus, he wanted the ruler's hunters to unite and pass this test together. In addition, Ripple is generous and can give blessings to hunters. The sword was found. Now Baek Ho Min had to wait for a signal from Kong Ha and hit the butterfly. The time had come. The butterfly was behind Huo Ming. While trying to kill her, Ho Min still looked at her, which led to his vision being distorted and nothing happened. Then Buck came up with another idea. He activated the life skill Martial King. Through Kang Ha's gaze, Huo Min decided to find the butterfly's location. But instead of the king, the one and only came. Ho Ming began to hear voices in his head, but could not understand whose they were, the one or the platinum monarch. Kang Ha couldn't move. It was as if his seal was being controlled. He suspected that this was Huo Ming's skill. Accordingly, the mirror butterfly and its clones also did not move. The only one assured that the butterfly was found in Kang Ha's eye. It only moves in the dark when no one sees it. Therefore, in due time, the constellation ripple filled everything with light to defeat the butterfly. But the one was aimed at acting according to a different scenario. For example, slam it with a fly swatter. At this moment, Huo Ming's skill switched to Martial King. Ho Min ordered Kong Ha not to take his eyes off the butterfly. Huo Ming's sword burst into light. The butterfly's heart has been spotted. And Baek Ho Min was able to kill her by plunging a sword into her heart. When he woke up, Baek thought it was all a dream. The sword in the mirror after this test returned to its previous state. The constellation ripple appeared before Huo Ming's eyes. She gave him the blessing light. Huo Ming did not yet know what a unique ability this was, that it allowed the weapon to use starlight. The ripple disappeared so quickly, not allowing Beck to thank and say goodbye to her. Suddenly, Huo Ming remembered that he heard voices in his head and assumed that the one in the monarch had once been in this place for a test. If this were true, then the monarch knows something about the constellation, the One. Ho Ming was surprised how the One managed to so instantly take control of Kong Ha's seal and catch the butterfly. After everything that happened, 
Ho Ming realized that the surface is the place where new stories are written, and the foundation is the place where everything repeats itself. After checking the synchronization indicators as expected with the one, they took off, which indicated that Ho Ming's skill level would soon increase. Leaving the test site, Beck finally remembered his mentor but could not understand why he ran away. Ho Ming began to regain those strange sensations of moss growing on his body, like parasites. He decided to try Ripple's blessing on his cheapest knife. The knife burst into starlight. The starlight helped the feeling of moss disappear, and now Beck could calmly walk on the foundation without fear of becoming a parasite. Suddenly, Kong Ha appeared and scared Ho Min. The mentor said that he also received a blessing in the form of night vision skill, but Ho Ming's skill was much better. Ripple is very generous to her predecessors. She could become a role model if she were alive. To which Ho Min said that he had recently seen her. Kang Ha couldn't believe it because the ascended constellations cannot appear in their form. They can only whisper through the starlight. No matter what Ho Min said about the constellation he saw, Kang Ha still didn't believe him and suggested not to waste time, but to get out of the foundation. Walking towards the exit, Ho Min thought why his mentor was so calm and didn't even want to kill him after everything that had happened. As if hearing his thoughts, Kang Ha suddenly began to thank Baek Ho Min for winning this challenge. Returning to the monarch's abode, the hunters began to report their reports on each other. Kang Ha started. He called Buck a useless puppy who acts on impulse and can get the entire squad involved in an emergency. Therefore, he is worthy of execution and extraction of platinum. The angry Ho Min was also dissatisfied with his mentor and believed that there was no help from him. After listening to the reports, the monarch decided that the hunters got along well. Ho Ming was ordered to go and rest, which he did with pleasure. Left alone with Kang Ha, the monarch explained to him that her order to monitor Baek was not to assess his character and cooperative capabilities. But Kang Ha stood his ground. He was sure that Ho Ming had no place here and could discredit the name of the ruler. From the monarch's smile, Kang Ha realized that she had some kind of plan brewing. Clues left by Kang Ha's mentor, who sought to reach the 20th floor, suggested that the reason for the structural changes and deterioration in the tower was the descending constellations. There is a possibility that strong parasites will appear soon. The monarch ordered that the guildmaster be notified about this. Kang Ha also said that they found traces of the Ripple constellation. The monarch wanted the constellations to remain in their places at altitude and not worsen the situation below with their condescension. Returning to the topic of Beck Ho Min, the elder hunter said that he was surprised by his skill, and if he had a worthy mentor, he could become much stronger. To which the monarch said that Beck's strength lies in the support of the constellations. In the test, Kang Ha could not understand what these constellations were, since their traces were insignificant. The ruler was sure that the appearance of Baek Ho Min, helped by mysterious constellations and the deterioration of the tower, was not just a coincidence. She ordered Kang Ha to take care of this matter. Kang Ha was upset that he did not have the courage to tell the ruler that Ho Min was somehow able to control his seal. At this time, Ho Min took a hot shower and admired his strong body, on which all the wounds had already healed. There was a knock on the door. Standing in front of him was the monarch who had come to reward him for his completed task. She noticed that Huo Min was rough with his hands and didn't care about maintaining his seal. And in order to increase the effectiveness of your skills, you need to take care of it. Since Huo Ming's seal was made of steel, it had to be restored manually, so she awarded him a platinum coin. Beck did not want to accept such a reward since he knew its value, but the monarch calmed him down. It was just a bodily reinforcement for being rude to your body. If Ho Ming had given the ruler the opportunity to delve into his seal, then stronger improvements would have been available to him. It was only necessary to come to an agreement with his constellations. The offer was very attractive, but still Beck did not want his seal to be taken apart piece by piece. Without letting him finish, the ruler added that they had a common goal, to rise to the top of the tower for the sake of humanity that he was a very talented hunter, and she wanted to help him develop. But to do this, you just need to know his abilities and limits. In his thoughts, Ho Min was ready to agree with the ruler's proposal. Having discovered his abilities, he will be able to be under the tutelage of the most authoritative person in this city. The monarch continued her persuasion. She asked Huo Ming to join her because she needed reliable people. 
the guy admitted that it is difficult for him to trust someone. The monarch, having learned this, proposed to gain his trust through a romantic relationship with each other. Everyone, including Ho Min himself and his constellations, were shocked by such a proposal. In the subconscious world, upon hearing the news, the constellations were divided into two camps. Dynamite believed this was New Hope. The only one was against this, because he knew what kind of heart the monarch had, and that something bad could be expected from her. Bek Ho Min found it hard to believe that he would be meeting with the ruler himself. He was nervous about his upcoming date with her. He needed advice, so he decided to turn to the executioner doll. Since the doll was a knight, she had to refrain from unnecessary feelings, so she compensated for this by reading romantic stories and was an expert in love relationships. She agreed to help Beck, and to begin with, they decided to choose a suit for their date. After trying on several looks in the store, we settled on the most ordinary one. At the checkout when paying, it turned out that Ho Ming had no money and the doll had to pay for it. Ho Min chose a place for a date, a walk through the back streets. Before the appointed time, the monarch came to the meeting in a beautiful outfit. She was surprised to see the executioner doll next to Ho Min and asked her to leave, since she and Beck had a preliminary agreement to meet. Ho Min and the ruler went on their date, and the executioner doll was left bewildered by what he saw. In order to make the situation more intimate, the ruler asked Ho Min to simply call her by her first name, Yun So Hyun. When Beck asked how she found his location, Yoon replied that she installed tracking in his seal. The couple, as Beck had planned, went for a walk through the back streets. A little later, Ho Min realized that this was a mistake, since the thieves had already targeted the couple. Huo Ming was about to use his skill when suddenly all the thieves ran away from them. The case turned out to be the executioner doll, which was watching the couple. Eight hours had passed since the couple walked boredly without saying a word. Yun Seo understood this and suggested that Bayek do something that would make their hearts flutter. They went to play three cups. Yun was very gambling, so they had already lost one million won. She didn't want to leave until she got back what she had lost. For the next round, Yun wanted to use her gold coin. Such a turn made the organizer of the game nervous. He could not break the rules of the back streets. His hands were shaking so much that he couldn't use his tricks. Ho Min's heart, as Yun had planned, began to flutter. Having chosen a glass, Yun was confident that this time she would accurately determine where the coin was. But once again, she missed. After counting her coins, Yun decided to continue the game. But the game was not destined to continue as the boss appeared. Park So Kyung, who dispersed everyone. She wondered who Yun was and why she came here. When suddenly she recognized Ho Ming as the elder's killer. Ho Min thought that this was one of the spider legs and was ready to engage in battle with her and her guards. At that moment, Yun showed a platinum coin, and everyone present realized that the platinum monarch was in front of them. The executioner doll also came to the rescue. This made Boss think that everyone was coming for her. But the monarch informed her that she just wants to return what she lost, so she aims to either continue the game, or she will have to take out her swords. The boss's choice was obvious. She agreed to the game and was confident that her vast experience in gambling would help her defeat the monarch. Yun set a condition, since she was not very lucky today, that Ho Min would participate in the game instead of her. The boss, deciding that it would be more difficult to deceive Beck in the game, suggested that this time he stir the cups. And she chooses. Such conditions suited everyone. In order to accurately defeat the boss, Ho Ming used the dynamite skill with similar experience. Just as Ho Min wanted, the boss lost. He managed to win thanks to the fact that he carelessly rearranged the cups, then made a sliding sound, coughed falsely and lightly touched the table. The boss was furious at the loss. She realized that if she didn't get ahead now, the Platinum Monarch would grab her. She ordered her people to attack and kill the Monarch and Ho Min. But Ho Ming was faster. He was the first to knock the boss to the ground and thus forced her guards to stand still and not move. Finding a quieter place, Monarch interrogated Park So. In the first question, the Monarch wanted to know whether it was treason to try to turn the city upside down by producing counterfeit money, violence, and murder in the tower. To which I received the boss's answer that this was just an attempt to survive. The second question asked whether there were any other traitors besides that engraver. Now they call him a tattoo artist. Park So replied that she didn't know anything. She just sent bankrupt people to the spider. The third question asked how the cheater consistently won the game of cups. Everything was simple. There was a small hole in the table. 
Even having answered all the questions, this did not save the boss from execution because she had murder, violence, fraud, and gambling behind her. In her last words, Park so warned Ho Min not to deal with the monarch, since she is crazy and will lead everyone to death, and the spider has evidence on this matter. Park So was killed, and Ho Min thought about her words and wondered if it was true that this city was fraught with a great conspiracy. Looking at the stars, the monarch wondered if Huo Ming enjoyed the date. Having received an affirmative answer, she was already planning the second. Sitting on the bed, Ho Min thought about how to tell Kang Ha about his date with the monarch and that she liked him. Still unable to gather his strength, Ho Min could only ask about their upcoming mission. Kang Ha said that he had received a report that a high-level parasite had appeared on the tenth floor, and they were tasked with finding out whether it was related to structural changes. Ho Ming was dissatisfied that they would have to work together again, and that the monarch never revoked the order to monitor Kang Ha on him. The hunters arrived on the tenth floor of the tower. A hunter from the Weapons Guild met them and volunteered to accompany them to Sir Geomuk. On the way, Kang Ha told Ho Min who Sir Geomuk himself was. Geomuk is the founder of the Hunters Association, currently owns a weapons guild, and is a hero who protects people from parasites. For a long time, there was an organization, the Church of Eternity, which had a huge evil influence. Its leader was called Ruler. Only one ruler had the right to speak to the tower. The constellations, in turn, while conquering the tower, did not pay any attention to the state of the city. The complaints of the people of the city were stopped by the cruelty of the leader. But one day a 17-year-old girl appeared who wanted to become a ruler. This caused discontent among the residents and the civil war began. Due to fear of loss of profit, the Alchemy Guild came to the girl's defense. Then the church leader, having the power to heal incurable diseases, revived his dead followers. And the girl ruler gave the command to the Alchemy Guild to attack. Thus began the Blue-White War. Even in such a situation, the Church of Eternity retained its power, plus associations of hunters and paladins came to her defense. It seemed that the Church of Eternity had won. But then the constellation Geomuk, the founder of the Hunters Association, returned from the tower. Refusing the position of leader, he put all his strength into conquering the tower. Upon returning from the tower, he chose the girl as the new ruler. He was also supported by the new constellation prophet. The war was bloody and had heavy losses. The executioner doll appeared with the severed heads of the leader of the paladins and church employees. So the paladins turned into godless paladins. The Church of Eternity disintegrated and a new ruler took over. The Hunters Association was divided and its members went to different guilds. The executioner doll ended the civil war. The Platinum Monarch became ruler, and Geomuk fled the city to avoid an uprising. Kang Ha went on to talk about the concept of the tower, which is divided into ten floors. The base of the first staircase is a buried ruin and the forest above it. The base of the second staircase is the battlefield. In the subconscious world, the constellations recalled their feelings from the second staircase. Geomuk thought this place was the crappiest. Upon meeting, Geomuk immediately asked Kang Ha what was going on, why the elevator was closed and unknown constellations were leaving their places. Kang Ha assured that everything was fine in the city, but he heard that a high-level parasite had been found. It was true that he was found on the eleventh floor. Of course, Geomuk could have taken care of this himself, but he decided to report to the ruler first. When Geomuk paid attention to Ho Min, he predicted to him that since he was the ruler's hunter, he would soon die. Kung Ha asked permission from Geomuk to look at the behavior of a high-level species, citing that it was a problem of structural changes, and therefore a problem of the tower. Kung Ha also said that one of the structural changes is related to the foundation when the Ripple constellation passed its test with the mirror butterfly. Thanks to the Celestial Observatory, it became known that the Ripple is one of the constellations that began to move, and therefore its structures also began to move. Kang Ha believed that this was a very serious matter and therefore wondered if any problems had been noticed in the mirror room on the tenth floor. Geomuk convinced him not to worry about it. One of the guild hunters went to accompany the ruler's hunters to their destination. According to the guild, the changes took place on the eleventh floor, on a hill with a broken flagpole. Fighting every day, the parasites tried to raise the flag from the other side. Suddenly, Ho Min saw a dead man. It was a corpse that could move even with mortal wounds. Their brain was one with the brain of the parasite. 
Kang Ha explained to Ho Min that if he wants to kill the parasite, he must take the gold from him or bury him where there is no starlight. A large number of parasites on the second staircase are people. The guild hunter stated that three main hunters and twenty soldiers were sent to the scene of the changes, and he does not understand why the ruler decided to send her two more hunters. Something strange was happening, and Kang Ha told Ho Min he was getting ready for a fight. A whole horde of dead men with weapons appeared in front of the guys. The battle has begun. In order for a dead person to die, it was not enough to simply cut off his head. It was necessary to cut in the area of the heart and get the gold. Huo Ming realized that the strength of the dead was much higher than that of those on the first floor. Kang Ha didn't like that Ho Min fought aggressively and was simply wasting his strength that while Beck was fighting one, he had already killed five. From the side, Ho Min assessed how his mentor was fighting and realized that it was necessary to take the correct position and rotate the knife when striking. Ho Ming decided to try the same and activated his martial king skill, and things went much better and faster. Kang Ha was angry that constellations were helping Beck again. In the subconscious world, the martial king said that the technique Beck uses was taught to him by Kang Ha Jin himself. Looking at all this, the one and only concluded that Ho Min was still fighting the dead for a very long time. It would be faster if they called the magician. Dynamite supported him and concluded that it would be nice if the alchemist also helped. The warlike king did not like this. In his opinion, it was possible to do without the alchemist. Hearing this, the one told a story that once there was someone who said the same words about the alchemist. When the alchemist heard this, he became very angry and decided to show how important he was in the tower. Six months after he began to act, he completely cleared the 11th to 13th floors of parasites. After that, if a hunter died there, he did not turn into a parasite, but received his first star. What he heard amazed the martial king, because it was not just dynamite skill, but the level of distortion of the tower's structure itself. Dynamite was embarrassed. Thanks to the alchemist's skill, a huge number of medicines were created for the Platinum Monarch. But the one decided to add a drop of ointment to these good words. In his opinion, the monarch forced Dynamite to work on the simplest job, because she was afraid that if his skills were used incorrectly, the tower and the city could be destroyed. He also suggested ending this conversation because now they had another goal in front of them, so that Ho Min would dominate this tower. Finally, all the dead were killed. The guildmaster was seriously injured in the battle. Before his death, he asked to convey something to Geomuk. But he didn't have time, because Ho Min plunged a sword into him, believing that he could become a parasite. When the hunters arrived on the 11th floor of the tower, it was already too late. The weapon guild hunters were killed and their hearts cut out. Suddenly, they heard someone scream and hurried towards him. The girl was in despair from such a large and endless number of dead people. The hunters arrived in time and managed to save the girl. As it turned out later, this girl is a student of the Weapons Hunters Guild, whose name is Yu Ha Yul. She practiced on the second staircase. Frightened, she said that her comrades were dead. One of the masters was wounded, and the second had disappeared. The Weapons Guild hunter shouted at the student so that she should not mumble but speak clearly and clearly. Ho Min stood up for the frightened girl. Having calmed down, the weapon hunter asked the student if there were any other survivors. It turned out that out of the 23 hunters, seven were dead, nine were wounded, and five were missing. The student is the only one who is completely fine. The hunter praised the student for receiving and treating all the wounded in the tent. The wounded foreman Kong Min, said that when they went down to the hill, they saw an undead centipede, which should have only been on the 18th floor, and a large number of dead people. Kang Ha decided to ask the student a few questions. The student did not want to answer and admitted that the undead centipede made one offer to them. Kang Ha asked to tell them everything, since they are the ruler's hunters. The student was shocked because the centipede promised to give them life if they brought the ruler's hunters. Then the dead themselves arrived in huge numbers. The student was sent to the tent to take care of the vice captains. The dead demanded that Baek Ho Min be given to them. Then everyone else would remain alive. The guild hunter had no evidence to believe them, to which the dead replied that they were blessed with the promise of the dark ghost constellation. Kang Ha still didn't believe in this, because the dark ghost was a five-star constellation, and if he didn't fulfill his promise, he would lose the stars, so he wouldn't take the risk. The mentor was not ready to give up Beck Ho Min, so he decided to fight. 
The student returned and reported that the foreman had killed himself when he learned that the centipede had surrounded them. Threatening with a knife, she offered to give up Homin and then everyone else would survive. Kong Ha knocked the knife out of her hands and threw her to the ground. Agreeing with the student, the guild hunter attacked Kong Ha and wounded him. Kong Ha managed to force the hunter to the ground, trying to explain that their plan would not work. Kong Ha appealed to everyone who had a desire to give Ho Min to the dead, that Beck is the ruler's hunter, and they all risk being guilty of treason. After listening to all this, Huo Ming decided to go alone and kill these creatures. Kong Ha was furious at this action because he did not know what to say to the ruler. When leaving, Beck decided to take the weight off his shoulders and admit that he went on a date with the monarch. He activated the 10,000 Swordmaster skill, and he attacked the dead with his sword. Nothing good came of this. The dead grabbed Ho Ming. The only thing Beck could do in this situation was to ask for help from the constellations. Dynamite came to the rescue. Recently, Ho Ming increased the synchronization level with the Dynamite constellation to the second. As a reward, he chose the skill Mini Laboratory. From the history of mankind, it is known that the first laboratory was their own body. The bodies were used as research equipment to identify poisons and drugs. Dynamite's mini lab made this skill more intuitive. Buck pounced on the dead man and took the mushroom out of his eye. And he ate it so that the mini laboratory would analyze it and begin to synthesize the corresponding vaccine ingredient. Buck began to bite the dead, thus spreading the poison. It worked. Suddenly, Huo Ming saw a flag, which meant that the main body was standing in front of him. Kang Ha came to the rescue, throwing two swords to Beck. The mentor also activated his skill so that the dead began to move more slowly. In his very best, Beck activated the 10,000 Sword Master skill. It became easier to kill the dead, but Kang Ha's skill was coming to an end, and he asked Ho Min to deal with the undead as quickly as possible. Beck understood this, but there were so many dead, and the undead were so far away. How conveniently the student appeared with her comrades to help the hunters. Kong Ha's skill ended and the dead began to move as before. Then Beck decided to take a risk and jump over the dead to the undead. And he succeeded. The undead were killed. Ho Ming thanked his constellations for their help. Looking at Ho Min, Kong Ha remembered the ruler's words. She said that a good hunter is a simple-minded and lucky hunter. But Kong Ha cannot become like that. He will only be one who lives a long time. And now Kong Ha, looking at Ho Min, understood who the monarch meant. In the fortress chamber on the tenth floor, the ruler's hunters were talking about the newcomer Yu Ha Yul. She was trained by Geomuk himself and gave her the blessing of the constellation, so she was unharmed in battle compared to others. The hunters managed to find what they were looking for, traces of the dark ghost constellation on the bodies of the undead. But there was another problem. The dark ghost did not bring the undead alone, but someone from the Weapons Guild helped him. The Dark Knight constellation rose during the Blue-White War. He was at the top among magicians, but later fell victim to the war, so now he has a grudge against the monarch. Unlike living constellations, ascended constellations cease to be themselves and lose their memories. They are otherwise called ghosts. Kang Ha explained that such constellations simply imitate their beliefs and bless those they like, but they do not have any clear will. Their behavior is called Whispering Starlight. Now the main task before the guys was to find a traitor in the guild. To do this, they wanted to talk to Geomuk. Ho Ming suggested that perhaps the head of the guild himself was collaborating with the Dark Knight. A guild hunter came into the tent and said that Geomuk wanted to talk to Beck Ho Min. Along the way, Beck remembered how they wanted to give him to the dead to be torn to pieces, but in the end, Beck saved everyone. The hunter was ashamed of what was happening, and he asked for forgiveness. Geomuk began his meeting with Ho Min with words of gratitude for saving his hunters. For Ho Ming, words of gratitude were not enough, because in such situations one is punished for trying to betray a comrade. Geomuk suggested calming down and not getting hung up on little things, and going through it with understanding and composure. And he will fulfill some wish of Ho Ming. But Beck refused, and he suggested leaving it for the future. Then Geomuk began a conversation for which he called Beck. He said that signs of rebellion had been seen in the vicinity of the Platinum Monarch, and that traitors were in the ruler's palace itself. Someone knows about the ruler's every move, and someone close to her is planning to start an uprising. Gail Muck received a proposal to overthrow the current ruler and install a new one in her place. That's how he learned about the uprising. He decided to stick to his seat, so he said nothing to the offer. 
Ho Ming asked if there was any idea who the traitor could be. There were speculations. Gyomuk thought it was Baek Ho Min. Beck was shocked. He could not believe that he was considered a traitor. Then Gyomuk explained his assumption. He believed that Ho Ming was receiving a lot of attention from the constellations. Ripple blessed him and even the Dark Knight was interested in him. And now the Geomuk constellation. To prove his innocence, Gyomuk asked to tell which constellations Beck maintains contact with. Having received no response, he began to demand the names of the stars, putting a lot of pressure on Huo Ming. The pressure was so strong that Beck could not move and felt that he might die from suffocation. But the like gender scientist from the One reminded Huo Ming that he was protected by three constellations and he should not be afraid. To another question about the names of the constellations, Baek replied that their name was Baek Ho Min, that one day he would become a star. Geomuk was angered by this answer, and his spirit threw Beck's body into the wall. Beck already thought that he would simply die if Geomuk pointed a finger at him, but he could not accept death so meekly. When Ho Ming tried to attack Geomuk, he grabbed his hand and began to reason. He insisted that the world had collapsed, and instead of religion, People created the Church of Eternity. People began to believe in the Tower. The Tower for them is salvation, and the Constellation is the angels who are looking for salvation. They began to worship her because no one could reach the top of the Tower. According to Geomuk, this happened due to ignorance of the territory, which was considered holy. But if ever the Constellations manage to reach the top of the Tower, they will no longer worship it. Ho Ming heard something else that if you reach the top of the tower, you can return the world to its previous form. Geomuk continued his story. Initially, the church chose a comfortable world with the belief that it might not exist. Then, the climbing to the top of the tower stopped. Therefore, the tower chose a new ruler, the Platinum Monarch. Geomuk demanded Ho Ming to tell the voices of whose constellations he hears. Maybe these are the voices of those who stopped climbing. Geomuk squeezed Huo Ming's hand even more tightly. Beck had to activate the skill. He attacked Geomuk with his fists, and then he stole his sword and went into battle. For Geomuk, these were ordinary antics, not a fight. Huo Ming decided to prove his strength by pulling out his two knives and turning on Master of Ten Thousand Knives. But even this tactic did not work on Geomuk. The knives broke. Geomuk slammed his iron hand into Huo Ming's face and asked why, having such an unusual skill, he relied on a weapon. With each blow, he asked Beck to use his entire arsenal. Ho Ming's strength was running out. He had not yet encountered such ancient and powerful constellations as Gyomuk. But still, he was not ready to show all his skills. But I realized that no matter what weapon he had in his hands, they were all essentially the same. This means that this time, instead of a sword, for example, a hand can be used as a weapon. Beck reactivated the 10,000 Swordmaster skill. But alas... Geomuk's defense was so strong that Huo Ming's skill did not work. Huo Ming's hand began to disappear. This was the end for Huo Ming. He lost consciousness on his feet. A few days later, Geomuk resurrected Beck. He did this despite the fact that he considered Beck to be a useless idiot who became the ruler's hunter. As training, Geomuk invited Huo Ming to join his weapons guild before he died climbing to the top of the tower. Kung Ha immediately opposed it, since Beck was in the possession of the ruler. This proposal was strange for Ho Min, because only recently he had been called a traitor, to which Geomuk replied that initially he suspected him, but then realized that he was ready to climb the tower at any cost. So instead of killing him, Geomuk decided to keep an eye on him. Geomuk also shared that now the city has experienced regression, and he is suspicious of the monarch. After all, it could turn out that the ruler himself fell by agreeing to peace. But now Geomuk is convinced that this is not so, because the ruler took such a madman as Beck as her hunter. No matter how angry Ho Ming was with Jeomuk, he should have known that he would face much more challenges from the tower in the future. Tower challenges are tests that, when passed, give you the opportunity to climb further. And they're not only parasites will be waiting for him, but also constellations and other people. Ho Ming understood that things would only get worse, but he so wanted to end this miserable life that he was determined to climb to the top of the tower. Kung Ha was angry with Ho Min because he was interested not only in the ruler, but also in Geomuk. A week later, Ho Ming was happy that his arm had healed. Geomuk invited Beck to come with him to show him something. They find themselves in a mirrored room where there is an opportunity to meet another you or find objects. 
The place in the mirror room is a parallel world in which an alternative chosen life path is shown. Geomuk remembered that the last time he used this room was during the Blue-White War. There he saw a world without the Platinum Monarch. There he saw a future in which the Church of Eternity was victorious. After this, he sided with the Platinum Monarch to avoid such a future. Since then, Geomuk has not used the mirror room and has not told anyone about it. He still isn't sure if he made a good choice. With the advent of Ho Ming, the conspiracy against the monarch began to spread so quickly that it involved other constellations. That's why Geomuk suggested that Beck use the mirror room instead of just training. Wishing him luck, Geomuk threw Ho Min down. So Ho Min ended up in a parallel world. In the subconscious world, there was talk about who they would meet this time in the parallel world. Ho Ming was faced with a dilemma. He needed to go through the mirror room and find himself not in another parallel world, but in the original one. Someone spoke. This was another Baek Ho Min. Since the new Baek Ho Min joined the Weapons Guild, it was customary to call him a gunsmith. A conversation ensued between the guys in which they compared facts about themselves. For example, a steel seal with the third rank skill strengthening, which helped the gunsmith join the Weapons Guild. Beck saw a message about increasing synchronization with the Martial King due to the similarity of the seal. The gunsmith was also the hunter of the ruler who was caught by the executioner doll, but now he was training in the guild because he was weak. The gunsmith believed that Geomuk would look better in the role of ruler than monarch, and all a person needs to climb to the top of the tower is just a sword. From the nonsense that the gunsmith was talking about, the warlike king in the subconscious world wanted to disappear and die. The weaponsmith continued to say that in the end, those who climb to the top are the hunters of the weapons guild. There is also a guild of printing and alchemy to maintain the guild of weapons. Beck couldn't listen to this nonsense anymore and asked the gunsmith to shut up. The armorer could not understand Beck's behavior and continued to evaluate the monarch, saying that she was a wild and superficial woman. Unable to bear it, Beck attacked the gunsmith. The gunsmith took out his flaming sword and Beck activated the 10,000 Swordmaster skill. During the battle, the armorer noticed that Beck's martial arts were different from Geomuk's. This was not surprising because Huo Min did not study at the Weapons Guild. The fight made it clear to Beck that the body of a man from the Weapons Guild had muscles and nerves specifically for fencing. The Guild has its own methods of improving their body and weapons, and of course, they do not break their weapons, but take care of them. This is exactly what Beck needs to learn from the original world. In the fight, Beck's blade broke and the seal began to burn. This time, Beck activated the Master of Ten Thousand Swords, and with all the strength in his fist, he wanted to kill the gunsmith. When I suddenly saw that he had no legs, this was the end of the fight. Now Beck understood why Geomuk sent him here and how he can now control his power. The next room Beck found himself in was the Alchemy Guild. There he helped prepare medicines. Thus, Beck visited many rooms, including empty ones, and Beck told a lot of homins. Many Beck homins were simply losers, except, of course, from the Weapons and Alchemy Guild. As Beck explored the rooms, his synchronization with the constellations increased. But now he was looking for a way out of the parallel world, and he came across only empty rooms. Suddenly, someone attacked him from behind. Beck felt a stinging pain and was injected with poison. In front of him stood a girl who considered him the ruler's dog. Huo Ming thought that it was a traitor who hid in the room to kill him. He decided to interrogate her and activated the skill to do this. But nothing worked. The skill was not activated. Beck thought that this person had a skill that canceled his skill. Suddenly looking closer, he noticed a steel seal on her neck. It turns out that this girl was also Baek Ho Min. While fighting, Beck wanted to understand why he was a girl. The girl's movements in the fight were similar to people from the back alley. Then it dawned on Huo Ming that if he moved up in rank in the back alleys and became a servant of the spider, he would turn into a girl. The constellations in the subconscious world were surprised because they saw this girl for the first time. Only the one knew who she was, but Beck shouldn't have encountered her. Reluctantly, the one said that this was the second girl who became a constellation after him. Her name is Miori. In the battle with Miori, Ho Ming was unable to activate his skill no matter how hard he tried. In addition, the seal on his hand began to burn. And since Miori was Beck Ho Min, then the seal on her neck was burning. There was no point in continuing, and Miori invited Ho Min to stop and sit down. Huo Ming wondered why the girl was going to kill him. Miori replied that she had decided to kill all the ruler's hounds that appeared in the mirror room. 
It dawned on Ho Ming that Miori was him, only from a world where he became a traitor. With all her might, Miori wanted to prove to Ho Ming who the Platinum Monarch was. She was sure that the Monarch was a parasite. Beck, of course, didn't believe it, because the Monarch knows how to manipulate seals, not to mention parasites. But Miori made him think, because he had not seen whether the Monarch himself had a seal. Then the conversation turned to Miori herself about her ability to scam people. She said that the spider taught her this, and she is the spider's leg. The spider saved her when she was on the verge of death. This happened when she killed an old man, and the executioner doll and the monarch found her and tried to kill her. After hearing the story, Huo Ming still couldn't believe that the monarch could be a parasite. After all, she is so kind to him. Miori gave up. She did not try to convince Ho Ming anymore. She simply gave advice to find out everything about rebellion against divinity. Her verdict was that Huo Ming's position regarding the Platinum Monarch would be determined when either he killed her or she killed her. Miori left but finally told her how to get out of the mirror room. In the subconscious world, the one was angry. He didn't expect Miori to escape. Dynamite and the War King were perplexed. They were very curious about who she was. The only one still decided to tell that this constellation successfully carried out an uprising. She is Baek Ho Min, who killed the monarch and became the ruler of the city. Her name is White Spider. The constellations found it hard to believe that a woman could succeed in an uprising and seize control of the city. The warlike king believed that a woman could not lead the uprising, much less successfully. Up to this point, the one reasoned, they didn't have to worry about rebellion. But with the advent of the constellation that killed the Platinum Monarchs, everything changed. Now the constellations were confused about what awaited them next. Finally, Beck returned to reality, and from the threshold began to blame Geomuk for not telling him how to get out of the mirror room. This situation amused Geomuk. He believed that this was excellent training for a ruler's hunter. He continued his conversation with Kang Ha Jin about the traitors who are taking up positions in the city and in the weapons guild. Geomuk hinted to Ho Ming that he must have noticed something in the mirror room. Bake remembered that Bake Ho Min from the Weapons Guild and the female version were against the Platinum Monarch. Switching to a positive note, Geomuk once again thanked Ho Ming for saving his hunters. Even if he seems weak, he was a blessing to the Platinum Monarch. Geomuk admitted that thanks to Ho Ming, he decided to believe in the Monarch and now the Weapons Guild will stand on her side. To himself, Kong Ha thought that Bake had strong constellations, which, like Geomuk, were on his side. And with this situation, the chances of a successful uprising were reduced. The Platinum Monarch thanked Ho Ming for receiving support from the Jeomuk constellation. As a reward, the ruler decided to give Ho Ming a date. She also promised that this time the date would be different, because she asked the Executioner doll for advice. While the Monarch was talking to him, Ho Ming was thinking about how lonely she was. That there were traitors around her, and he had to find out everything about the uprising, even if he had to deceive her. Taking Ho Ming by the hand, the monarch dragged him to the cinema and then to dinner. The monarch again improved Huo Ming's seal and he also wanted to give her a gift. First refusing and then thinking about it, the ruler decided that she wanted a real crab head as a gift. Retreat! Kim Ho Tae, one of the spider legs, is known as crab. On the street, a crab is someone who sells and buys corpses. Taking one alchemist, Ho Ming was interested in why he kills people and sells their organs for money. Ho Min also demanded to know where the crab was, since someone from above needed its head. But suddenly the rope with the alchemist broke, and he fell down without answering the questions. Ho Ming was surrounded by masked people with swords, similar to those, which the female version of Beck used. As it turned out, this guy who fell down was just bait for Huo Ming. The masked men admitted that they knew that the Platinum Monarch was targeting the spider legs, so they came up with this bait plan. These people promised not to kill Huo Min if he brought the monarch here. Huo Ming could not do this, and he decided to fight them. At this time, the monarch walking in the rain was thinking about whether Huo Min would survive this time or not. Beck fought for his ruler, killing one after another from this group. Attempts to kill Beck with poison did not work, since he already had such experience. Therefore, the surviving alchemist had to flee the battlefield. And Beck felt bad. This time there was too much poison, and he passed out. Beck woke up from the words of the ruler. He was worried why she had come here when she could have just waited at her mansion. She replied that she saw an escaped alchemist and decided to torment him a little with interrogation about the crab. Huo Ming saw the bloody corpse of the alchemist. 
He asked the ruler for forgiveness that he could not give what she wanted. But she admitted that there are some items that she would be glad to receive, and for this she would be ready to fulfill any wish of Ho Ming. Ho Ming needed to get rid of five people, a crab, an older sister, a raccoon, an anglerfish, and an assassin. Real identity unknown. Each of them controls parts of the back streets on behalf of the spider, and if Ho Min gets rid of them, the spider will become a helpless bandit. Four days later, Ho Ming managed to take the crab and, placing it on an electric saw, began interrogating it. The crab insisted that they wanted to get rid of the monarch only for the sake of the citizens, that this woman is trying to gain the power of the Church of Eternity. Ho Ming did not believe it and believed that everyone had conspired to say the same thing. Seeing the saw blade in front of his eyes, the crab agreed to answer all of Ho Ming's questions without deception. The first question was about rebellion against divinity. In general, Beck himself tried to find out something about this uprising, but nothing happened. According to his version, the monarch's opponents must have known something. The crab replied that he heard something like that from his older sister from the Red Light District. She said it was taking over heaven. She mentioned something about a ruler who would rebel against divinity. The elder sister was on Huo Ming's list, so her story might be useful to him. The next thing Beck wanted to know was information about spider legs. Everything that the crab said did not inspire confidence in Ho Ming, but the crab begged to believe him. Suddenly, Ho Min received a like from the constellation whose name he sees first, Miori. In the subconscious world, the appearance of a new constellation was not welcome. Dynamite and the king discussed among themselves that if Miori looked like the female version of Ho Ming that was in the mirror room, then obviously she was the exact opposite of the one. If the new constellation has the skill of blocking other people's skills, then the wizards from the Seal Guild will not be able to resist it. The Martial King wondered if it was true that with her skill, she was able to kill the Platinum Monarch. Homing remembered that thanks to the Miori constellation, he was able to learn a lot about the spider. Finally, Beck asked the crab what a spider looked like. The crab said that he had a mask and that he smelled very much, and that the spider is sure that if the Platinum Monarch is not killed, then all the citizens will die. The crab assured Ho Ming that the monarch was up to something. The crab was killed. From the very beginning, Ho Min knew that he would kill the one who traded in the organs of living people. Ho Ming's second target was his older sister, Young Jo. The constellation Miori actively assisted in her interrogation. From the interrogation, we only managed to find out that rebellion against divinity is something like a way to raid the tower. This meant that Beck had only to ask the spider himself or the Platinum Monarch about the uprising. For this, he needs to prepare. As required, he killed his older sister. Ho Ming arrived at the drug den for rare items, which he asked the seller to prepare in advance. Having assessed all the items, Beck was satisfied except for the half-belt, from which he felt some strange energy. And not in vain, because this rare belt had a unique ability, namely, all the objects stored in it weigh half as much. The energy that Beck felt was in some way ghostly. When the world fell apart, people learned of their existence. Ghosts cannot approach the tower, but some of them have an item or person with which to do so. Having slipped this belt to Ho Ming, the seller wanted him to try to drive out the ghost because he had recently been blessed by the constellation Ripple. Nothing worked, although the ghost felt not so strong. The seller said that the first owner of the belt was possessed and was killed by a holy knight. Ho Ming doubted whether to take this item and asked the constellations for advice. The answer came only from Miori. Apparently, only this constellation was willing to take risks. Beck, deciding to take a chance, bought it from the seller. The constellations in the subconscious world were indignant because, because of Miori, their back acquired and possessed object. The only one wanted to find Miori and talk, since he could not kill her in this world. So just find out why she forces Beck to make such decisions. Walking along the alley, Ho Min reasoned that he had three more spider legs left to kill, and then the monarch would fulfill his wish. Suddenly, a guy appeared in front of him and called Beck by name. As it turned out, it was the raccoon himself. He himself found Beck to convey the spider's offer to work with them. If Beck agreed immediately, he would rise to the level of a spider's leg. And if an uprising starts, he will be in a much better position. For example, the title of leader of the Weapons Guild. Raccoon said that Geomuk wants to leave this position, but because of the contract with the monarch, he is tied to her. If this female ruler dies, Geomuk will immediately go to climb the tower. The offer was attractive, 
but Beck saw people with weapons, and it was strange for him that by making this offer they wanted to kill him. Raccoon's retinue began to attack Beck. From their movements, he realized that they were traitors from the Weapons Guild. The raccoon, smoking a cigar, began to produce twice as much smoke. Thus, he wanted to block Beck's connection with his constellations. Beck really couldn't apply Ripple's blessing to his blade. The smoke interfered with the perception of the constellations. But Huo Ming's constellations were stronger, and the Martial King's skill was activated. Having turned on the Master of Ten Thousand Knives, he began to kill his retinue. After the battle among the dead, Ho Min noticed a familiar face. It was one of Geomuk's closest allies who was a traitor. The raccoon was shocked why his smoke didn't work. Taking off his glasses, he was determined to complete the job and kill Beck. Huo Ming saw the platinum prosthetic eye. The raccoon was once one of the ruler's hunters. In Huo Ming's opinion, the raccoon was different from other spider legs, so one could not let one's guard down with it. His thoughts were interrupted by an unexpected stab in the leg. The retinue that Ho Min had just killed came to life. They became undead. And the raccoon called the upcoming battle with him as a battle between the ruler's dogs and pointed his dagger at Ho Min's hand. There was a seal on the dagger. After being injured, Ho Min could not breathe normally. It followed that the raccoon had a skill that stopped feelings. The undead were advancing, and it was becoming increasingly difficult for Beck to evade them. The raccoon was a wizard who specialized in curses, so while his skill was working on Ho Ming, he was a corpse. Raccoon's daggers wounded Huo Ming's body one by one. He stopped seeing anything. Suddenly, he heard a notification sound, which reminded him that he could use the last skill. The skill was activated, and this time the constellation Miori came to Beck's aid. With new strength, Beck attacked the raccoon. How angry the raccoon was, he did not understand why his daggers with a curse that stupefied the senses did not work, and Beck was still alive. The raccoon had no choice but to use his special skill. At that moment, Huo Ming's knife flew into his eye with a seal. The raccoon army has fallen. Huo Ming's vision began to return. Raccoon's skill has been canceled. This was the first time the Miori constellation was in Huo Ming's body. Beck used completely different moves during battle compared to the Martial King. The movements were reminiscent of the movements of the killers from the snake's lair. Before dying, Raccoon tried to convince Ho Ming to believe that the Platinum Monarch was trying to rebel against divinity. That the monarch puts the entire human race against the tower is called rebellion against divinity. The raccoon admitted that as soon as the monarch found out that the raccoon was looking for information about the uprising, she sent him into a death trap. It was a spider who saved him from there. After listening, Ho Ming understood why the ruler's hunters did not live long. To make sure that the words spoken by the raccoon were correct, Ho Ming again asked the constellations. The light came from Miori, but to be 100% sure, he decided to ask the monarch directly. He was ready to plunge his knife into the raccoon when he saw the executioner doll. She said that she abandoned the title of constellation and returned to the city to stop the ruler's insane actions. She assured Ho Ming that the monarch was trying to involve him in a dangerous game. Beck was sure that the executioner doll was on the side of the monarch, but in the end this was not the case. The doll was simply watching the ruler in its own interests. Then Buck immediately plunged his knife into the raccoon. The doll failed to prevent this. Ho Ming began to defend the ruler. He understood that everyone hated her and was trying to get in her way, which is why she was acting so recklessly. He suggested that the doll go their separate ways and each do their own thing. For example, she has to defend the line. And he must cross this line in order to move humanity forward. Then the executioner doll warned that as soon as he kills someone he shouldn't touch, his head will fly off his shoulders. In the subconscious world, the one said that he met Miori, who immediately started a fight with him. According to the one, Miori hates him. She's smart, but she acts like a platinum monarch. The warlike king asked why Miori would kill the monarch. The only one concluded that she simply did not like her own kind. Now Miori doesn't want to show herself to other constellations in the subconscious world, but she promised to cooperate in order to help Huo Ming climb to the top of the tower. The warlike king was surprised that Miori would not try to kill the monarch this time. Everyone understood that without the platinum monarch, it was impossible to climb to the tower along the usual path. Therefore, Miori admitted the mistake she made at the end. Huo Ming received a sudden call from the monarch and headed towards him. Walking along the corridor, he saw two guys who were talking about how the ruler was calling the guild masters, 
since the situation in the city was unstable and there had been a change of power, that the ruler has not spoken to the people for a long time, but there are rumors that she is going to make some kind of proposal. Beck wondered what this special offer was and if it was related to his challenge. When Beck came to the monarch, she immediately stated that she knew that Beck was trying to find out about the uprising. There was no point in lying, so Ho Ming confessed. The raccoon, whom Beck thought he had killed, told her about this. He was resurrected by the constellation, perhaps the one that blessed the spider people. And now the monarch killed him again, sealing his mouth. The ruler told the story of meeting the raccoon. She met him when he committed a serious crime and gave him a choice, execute him or work for her. While working for her, he began to abuse the power of the ruler and return to his usual business. He also tried to figure out the weaknesses of the monarch, and as a result, he learned about the uprising and began to investigate it. In order not to make previous mistakes, the monarch offered to tell everything about the uprising herself, but then Beck would have to be with her forever, Beck agreed. She handed him an envelope with a love letter, and she promised to tell us on the third date about the uprising after today's speech. The ruler went to the place where the speech was to be delivered by car. The ruler's hunters and arriving hunters from the guild acted as guards, among whom was the student Yu Ha. Kang Ha assessed the situation. He understood that, although thanks to the guild they had enough hunters, the ruler could easily become a target during a speech. Suddenly, people in masks appeared and started shooting. No one expected that machine guns would be used. Kang Ha had to act the old-fashioned way, and he threw a knife, which hit one of the bandits in the head. Everyone had to try to survive until the ruler escaped. But then some kind of serving ball appeared in the sky. It was a bomb. It hit the car where the ruler was. Having looked closely, Kong Ha saw starlight and realized that there was a constellation in front of him. Rolling up his sleeves, Kang Ha was ready to fight the arriving constellation. He began to think who it could be. Only four constellations remained alive. It was definitely not Geomuk, since the physique did not match. The constellation prophet was a supporter of the monarch. It turns out either Tori or Sizigi. Kang Ha fought alone since others could no longer do it, and in his thoughts he dreamed that Baek Ho Min would come to the rescue. Suddenly, student Yu Ha came to the rescue. Kang Ha was glad even for such help, especially since the girl already had some experience. Kang Ha activated his time series observation skill. Yu Ha rushed towards the constellation with a knife. Kang Ha suddenly lost consciousness during the attack, and when he woke up, he saw that he was bleeding. All this time, Yu Ha had been fighting with the constellation, and now her strength was running out. Kang Ha needed to protect the girl, but he was so weak because he had lost a lot of blood. The constellation gave the order to pull the ruler out of the car. Yu Ha did not give up. She had to protect the ruler to the end. The constellation, by the way, was called Awe, and perhaps it was the blessing of Geomuk. The executioner doll hurried to help Yu Ha, because protecting the ruler was the first task. Everything was on fire everywhere. The doll and Yu Ha decided that everything was over, and they failed to save the ruler. But the monarch came out of the car completely unharmed and immediately praised Yu Ha for her work. The monarch was fine and asked to take better care of the injured Kang Ha. The doctor, after looking at him, did not give 100% predictions for his recovery. But the monarch concluded that as long as his heart belongs to her, it cannot stop. Meanwhile, the monarch followed into the tower to talk to Yu Ha, who was carrying out orders to protect her. At this time, in the back streets, Ho Min was attacked by people with pistols. These were people girls with pink hair. She began her conversation with Ho Ming with a story about her incredible grandfather, who was in charge of an orphanage. Beck began to guess who he was talking about. And when she said that her grandfather gave orders to kill, Ho Min knew exactly who it was. Her grandfather was an elder. The girl started laughing, because everything she said was just a joke. Beck realized one of the spider's legs was in front of him. Unknown! The girl told him to follow her, but Beck activated the reminiscent skill to kill the unknown, as he did not want to miss the ruler's speech. He began to cut the throats of the girl's guards, and in return he received pistol shots. Despite this, he was aiming to kill the girl, but when he looked at her, he saw a completely different person in front of him. The girl grew up and now she has become much stronger than anyone Beck could fight. She admitted that she was a one-star hunter. Piercing Ho Ming's body with her sword, the unknown said that her transformation is the power of a star, which he cannot cope with. Such words only angered Beck and he tried to kill her as soon as possible. But she, using her skill, either decreased or increased 
which distracted Ho Ming from the opportunity to end her life. The speed of her changes was great, but the main annoying factor for Huo Ming was that she always talked about her abilities. She, in turn, pursued the goal of distracting Ho Ming while her comrades attacked the monarch. She admitted that the recent explosion was a sign that the ruler was under attack. The monarch will definitely be dead since one strong constellation came to their aid. Beck was shocked that the monarch was attacked and that there was some kind of constellation that was helping them in the attack. While the unknown woman was chatting, Huo Ming managed to activate his new skill. It was the Shadow Hand skill. He began to confidently attack the girl. She did not expect to see that Beck had such a skill, but suddenly she noticed that he was not working at full power, since she managed to dodge his attacks. The thing was that Beck used the skill from Miori as soon as it was about the monarch. Since then, Miori's knowledge was available to Ho Ming and he knew what to do. The half-belt he purchased was possessed by Shadow Hands and Miori knew how to use it. In general, in order to tame Shadow Hands, you need to use golden collars. But Beck had another item that could be used as a replacement for the collars. The blessing of the Ripple Constellation Lantern. Thus, the Martial King used 10,000 Swordmaster to transform Ho Ming's body into a weapon, and Miori used Shadow Hands. The starlight emanating from Huo Ming's body suppresses the shadow hands by the required amount. As a result, Beck became a being with superhuman strength, maintaining his rationality. But there were consequences for using the skill. The seal began to burn so strongly that you could lose your hand or become possessed by shadow hands. Therefore, Beck needed to quickly end this person. But the unknown did not plan to give up. She extended her neck and bit Beck Ho Min. In retaliation, Ho Ming's shadow hands tore off Unknown's hand. She had to flee the battlefield. Ho Ming began to come to his senses after using the skill and thought that just a little more and he could have been killed. His strength began to leave him, and his eyes began to close. The constellations in the subconscious world were unhappy with Beck. After all, he behaved as if he was not afraid of death, and in such a short time he met so many opponents. In response to a question about the Unknown's skill, the only one said that it is a first-rank skill, Poisonous Snake, modified by the blessing of the Horror Constellation. In general, too many unknowns began to appear from the reconstruction of the tower, so there is no information why the horror and the dark ghost descended. The conversation between the constellations was interrupted. It was Miori. She appeared immediately with reproaches against the one who, in her opinion, turned the tower upside down. An argument broke out between the one and Miori. The only one argued that if it weren't for the revolution in the tower, then there would be no memory skill. Miori, in turn, convinced that when she was Ho Ming, everything that is happening now did not happen, and she does not regret that she was not able to conquer the tower. Therefore, she is proud of the One, Dynamite, and the Martial King, who managed to achieve at least something. Now everything has changed. The tower knows about Beck Ho Min. And the reason for the reconstruction is precisely the constellations in Beck's subconscious world. Miori assumed that the other constellations had received a task. The warlike king asked Miori if she had really rebelled against divinity at one time. Miori confirmed this fact and said that the reason was the bet against the tower. The tower remembers the stake, not the people. And by the time Miori killed the Platinum Monarch, it was too late to collect the bet. More precisely, the Platinum Monarch allowed herself to die only when she created a situation in which it was impossible to return everything to its place. Right now, rebelling against divinity is not as important as Beck Ho Min's memory skill, which will give a better effect. Miori summed up her story that now, thanks to Ho Ming, the Monarch's bet has ten times more chances of success. But listening to Miori's speech, the constellations did not yet fully understand their meaning. Ho Min and Kong Ha were cured and met in hospital beds. They told each other why they were wounded. Huo Ming boasted that he had fought with one-star hunters and defeated her. Kong Ha in turn fought with a constellation of a name he does not know. He also said that he was helped by a student who after the battle no longer wants to be a hunter. Everything is fine with the ruler. She is now resonating with the tower and any contact with her is prohibited. And while she was gone, Geomuk became her confidant. A week later, Ho Min was the first to fully recover from his illness and boasted about it to Kang Ha. But the pain from the seal did not go away, which meant that he would not be able to use the skill for a long time as before. Also, the Platinum Monarch had been resonating for a whole week, and she was the only one who could help Huo Ming. Deciding to give up on this, 
Beck checked the level of synchronization with the constellations. The level with the Martial King increased, which made it possible to choose a reward. This time, Beck decided to choose abilities. He decided to check them, but for this he needed an assistant. The sick Kong Ha became him. Sitting on a chair with an IV, Kong Ha only had to throw a knife at Homin. Gathering his strength, Kong Ha angrily pointed the knife at Beck. The knife flew so fast that it seemed impossible to dodge it and Beck would have to die. But this did not happen. Beck caught the knife without understanding how. His hand moved at the right moment and grabbed the advancing knife. It was a unique ability that needed to be trained. Suddenly a man appeared in front of the guys. It was Mentor Kang Ha. The mentor said that he had not yet finished exploring the tower, but had only reached the 42nd floor. The prophet called him because something strange was happening in the city. The Platinum Monarch, resonating in the tower, sent an urgent message to all reliable constellations, but only Geomuk came to the rescue. Then the mentor drew attention to Ho Ming and decided to get to know him. He did not say his name, asked to be addressed as teacher, and, as a sign of a pleasant acquaintance, extended his hand to Ho Ming. With such a cunning maneuver, he knocked Huo Ming to the ground. He began to fight with Huo Ming, thus teaching him a lesson. Feeling that Baek had no more strength left, he stopped the fight and assessed Huo Ming as a simple-minded good hunter. The teacher did not intend to stay here for long, but even during this time he promised to make Huo Ming useful. Two days had passed since the teacher trained Baek Huo Min, so there was practically no living space left on him. For the eleventh time, Baek lost consciousness and the teacher decided to leave it at that. The teacher completed his mission here, and was about to go upstairs when Kang Ha noticed a scratch on his face, thinking that it was Baek who managed to hit the teacher. In parting, the teacher decided to tell Kang Ha his opinion that most likely the monarch knew about the upcoming ambush, but did not show it, and Kang Ha could simply die. He asked Kang Ha to think about everything and not engage in senseless nonsense, and maybe even leave the monarch and come to him. Kong Ha did not respond to this proposal. The Executioner doll appeared. She needed two ruler hunters for a very important matter. Having recovered from training with the teacher, Baek and Kong Ha listened to what the Executioner doll wanted from them. She began to say that due to the absence of the monarch, half of the city was plunged into anarchy, and rumors began to spread. Rumors that the ruler has died and a corpse is ruling in her place. Plus, the latest terrorist attack was the work of rebels. They have many people and weapons as well as allies in the form of constellations. The thing was that after Homing killed most of the spider's legs, the spider lost control of the underground world. The city is on the verge of collapse, and this directly affects the hunters and constellations in the tower. And if they do not know that the people they left in the city are safe, then the hunters will begin to descend here. The Platinum Monarch has long been looking for opportunities to destroy the spider and, if possible, cause the least damage to the city. But now, because of the house, one of them needs to die. The Executioner doll brought the conversation to the main point. She wanted the guys to kill the spider. Huo Ming wondered why the Executioner doll couldn't do it herself. The reason was that she couldn't catch the spider's legs, and it was as if they were deliberately jumping on Huo Ming. The Executioner doll voiced the version that one of the spider legs is the spider itself, but it is difficult to say who exactly. Acting carefully, the doll managed to narrow down the suspects to the shimmering anglerfish. She made her decision based on the bullets found during the terrorist attack. They were previously produced only in the Weapons Guild, but Geomuk had never created such things. It turns out that the weapons for such bullets were obtained outside the city, from smugglers studying permafrost. Of course, there is a possibility that the anglerfish was acting on the spider's orders, but in any case, he is the spider's last remaining leg. After listening to everything, the guys agreed to get down to business. But Ho Ming put forward the condition that the doll turn a blind eye to the sudden bad deed on Ho Ming's part. The doll had to agree. Ho Ming moved to look for the anglerfish along the road leading outside the tower, otherwise known as the escape route. The place was very dangerous, but it was here that they could know how to find the flickering anglerfish. Suddenly, Ho Min noticed a strange silhouette in front of him, muttering some spells. This silhouette rushed at Beck, but Ho Min with one foot threw away the girl running towards him, a tamer named Haru. Throwing her away from him, Beck asked if she knew the shimmering anglerfish and the smugglers. And to get a truthful answer, he threatened with the appearance of the executioner doll since she was her enemy. 
The girl said that the anglerfish took away all the smugglers a week ago. He needed them because they know how to avoid shadowy hands even outside the city. But lately the angler has begun to force smugglers to leave the city more often, so much so that they even begin to get tired, and then suddenly some of the adults stopped coming back. Because of this, a commotion began, and those adults who knew something mistakenly complained to the angler, and since then they have not returned. So the little girl began to defend this place. The girl decided to help Beck Min, especially since she knew where the anglerfish was hiding and how to get it out. The goals of Beck and the girl coincided, he needed the anglerfish, and she needed the adult tamers to return. The place where the anglerfish hides is the sparkling street, Itaewon, the largest entertainment district in the city. This is where Homin in a business suit and the executioner doll in a sexy red outfit came for an undercover search. Kang Ha was also in touch with them, in the form of a beacon in the ear. Ho Ming was afraid that the executioner doll would be recognized, but she reassured him, because basically she is remembered only by her form. The executioner doll was sure that the anglerfish would never guess that they would come for him to such a place. The couple walked up to the entrance of the club and showed the invitation that Haru had given them. Inside the club, everyone was dancing and relaxing. The host came on stage and the auction began. As a summary of the main part of the auction, the presenter said that now the city is in turmoil, the tower is unstable, and the queen and paladins are doing nothing. Therefore, a security measure against shadow hands will be relevant for everyone. This remedy is Haru's tamer. Huo Ming couldn't believe his eyes. He knew that Haru had a way to lure out the anglerfish, but he did not expect that she would want to sell herself. The presenter began to list the advantages of the auction item, that only tamers can control the shadow hands, which, like ghosts, want to shred and kill. And this young lady is able to summon shadow hands and use them as servants. The audience was delighted with this proposal. The presenter also said that Haru swore in the contract to fulfill the will of the Dark Constellation, so in case of violation, she will face a bloody price. Huo Ming was not sure that the angler fisher would come and buy the tamer. Then someone else could buy it. The auction began, people were making bids, some offered one billion for Haru, and some even offered one and a half billion. Suddenly, a flickering anglerfish appeared and immediately named the biggest bet. The executioner doll immediately ordered the paladins to focus on him and be ready. Haru was sold to an angler, and the buyer was invited backstage to pick up his goods. The doll and Huoming also followed backstage, but were stopped. The couple had no choice but to start a fight. In a few strikes, they cleared the underground passage of the club's guards. But suddenly there was an impact from which the wall was demolished. In front of the couple stood Haru, who was possessed by shadow hands. And behind her, there were several more people who ironed the same way as she did. Ho Ming was furious. He did not understand why Haru did not save her life. Ho Ming and the doll had to go against Haru. Then an angler fish appeared with a smile on his face. He said that they would not be able to catch him. Ho Ming remembered how to kill the tamers. They have a special collar on their neck that keeps the shadow hands inside. And when you remove it, death occurs for them. For Ho Ming, Haru will always remain the kindest girl. The words of the anglerfish made Ho Ming very angry, and he decided to catch up with him, leaving the executioner doll to deal with Haru and the shadow hands until the end. But the door through which the anglerfish escaped was a trap, and Ho Min fell into some room. An anglerfish stood behind Ho Ming and laughed that his trap had worked. Ho Ming was glad to listen to what the anglerfish was talking about, because his constellation Miori would be able to recognize a lie. The angler shared that Ho Ming is very interesting to the spider. After such a statement and an approved like from Miori, Ho Ming was convinced that the anglerfish was not the spider itself. Anglermen did not understand what the others were finding in Beck Ho Min, although with his participation the spider's legs lost influence after the attack failed, and all allies were either killed or fled. Ho Min asked why the angler fishermen needed so many tamers, because they were just innocent people. The angler replied that he had no choice. If he could convince the tamers to help them in the coup, perhaps he would win. But they were not interested. Because of this, the anglerfish allowed the shadow hands to capture the bodies of the tamers and simply released them into the city. And now the angler was ready to show what he was capable of besides talking. Chains jumped out of his hands and grabbed Huo Ming. It's good that Kang Ha came to the rescue. The guys had to be vigilant, since it was unknown where the chain would fly out this time. 
Kang Ha went to help Ho Min free himself, but stepped on a seal that was disguised on the floor as a magic trap. Chains wrapped around his legs. The angler, in turn, did not expect that there would be two guys and not one, and was afraid that he would not be able to cope. Therefore, he decided to act ahead and released all the chains from his hands. In the guy's eyes, he looked like a monster. For this effect, he donated two of his hands to the constellation. Kang Ha understood that the anglerfish sacrificed his life to temporarily gain part of the constellation's power. Huo Ming was wondering why right now the anglerfish was risking its life for one battle. To quickly finish off the anglerfish, Ho Min asked Kang Ha to do that skill with a time series. Kang Ha couldn't risk it because he didn't even know what constellation the anglerfish was using. At this time, the similarity between Huo Ming and the one increased, and a reward had to be chosen for it. Right now, Huo Ming needed information, so he chose memories. Ho Ming was thrown out of reality, and he found himself among the stars of the constellations. Finding himself in such a place, Ho Ming was overcome by thoughts about the constellations, that the higher the star, the faster it burns out. Huo Ming heard a familiar voice and felt the burning of his mark. This one was beginning to act. Kang Ha Jin brought him back to reality with his scream. Continuing to struggle with the anglerfish's chains, Ho Min revealed to Kang Ha that he had borrowed the Overflow of Sin constellation weapon. This is a weapon that is capable of repelling the most cruel methods of punishment, and with the help of which it became clear that the anglerfish simply sacrifices its body. The angler was angry, realizing that he had been found out. Everything that Ho Min learned from the memories should have helped him kill the anglerfish. Strengthening Beck's seal with the help of memories helped him predict the anglerfish's every move. The angler was at a loss from this turn of events. And Beck knew what to do. He understood that such a simple person as an angler fisher cannot control all the chains at the same time. Cutting chain after chain, Buck was getting closer to the death of the anglerfish. And when the anglerfish opened in the center, Beck activated the Master of Ten Thousand Swords and killed the flickering anglerfish. In the subconscious world, the constellations were at a loss as to why the One needed to study the topic of strategy against the constellations. Kang Ha was glad that the anglerfish was finished and that Ho Min was alive. Kang Ha said that the fisherman used to be a warrior of the Paladin Orders. That's why he is so strong, and the battle was not easy. Looking at the corpse, the guys saw a dart in his forehead. According to Kang Ha, someone threw him before Ho Min pointed his sword at him. The guys didn't know who it could be, but Kang Ha suggested that this was a sign to look for a new opponent. Kang Ha decided to look up the name of a potential opponent in the book with a list of debtors. It included everyone who borrowed money from the elders. The book also contained names that belonged to participants in the uprising. From the book, Kang Ha realized that the anglerfish was a spider and, according to evidence, supported the rebellion. Ho Min concluded that this is not the end, and many interesting things await them ahead. At this time, all those possessed by shadow hands were killed, leaving only Haru, who was going to be killed by the Executioner doll. But Ho Min arrived in time and managed to stop the doll. He had a collar in his hands. The doll did not want to believe that Ho Min intended to leave Haru alive, because shadow hands had already taken possession of her, and in this case even the collar could not help. Ho Ming did not believe her, because the shadow hands are just spirits who were thrown out of the Star Sanctuary, and only then they became monsters wandering the lands. Retreat. Public information about Shadowhand says that most people only know that they are evil spirits that turn people into the same spirits. Knowing a little more than most people, Ho Ming tried to prove to the Executioner doll that Haru was not acting like an evil spirit and could resist the power of the Shadowhands. The doll gave up and now wanted to see what Beck would do with it. Using the memories of the Miori constellation, Beck knew how to subdue the shadow hands. First, he blinded Haru with a sword containing starlight. Next, he pierced her arms and legs, and he put the collar around his neck. He began to speak the words of the spell, and lo and behold, the shadow hands began to leave Haru. The executioner doll couldn't believe her eyes, because in the entire history of the tower, never before had someone possessed by shadow hands become human. But Haru was not completely saved. She remained half human and half possessed. Kukla didn't like this arrangement. After all, Haru was a potential threat, and if she was not killed, she would have to restrain the monster for the rest of her life. Ho Ming suggested keeping Haru's shadow hands with him, but not killing her. The doll refused because it was dangerous. 
Then Ho Min reminded that she had given a promise of one immunity per crime. Although it was dangerous, the doll had to keep her promise. She made an oath that she would guarantee Haru's safety while she was under Ho Ming's supervision. If for some reason Bak fails, the Executioner doll will return his star and punish him for the damage done. In the subconscious world, Dynamite was surprised that Miori agreed to live as a symbiote with Shadow Arms. To this, Miori decided to tell a story about why the Tamers appeared and why she did this. Initially, Tamers were simple people who were trying to find their way in this life. People who collected artifacts, who were unable to let go of memories, who wanted to meet their loved ones again. They all became Tamers. These are the ones who just wanted to see the family and friends who became ghosts again. The Tamers believed that they could subdue the Shadow Hands and turn the ghosts back into people. But alas, nothing came of it. Haru is an exceptional case with vast experience and knowledge. Moreover, this is not the first time she has become obsessed. The first time she managed to free herself. Miori admitted that she learned the skills of taming Shadow Hands for Haru's sake, and now she assured that Haru would help them defeat the Platinum Monarch. Miori also had to tell that Haru was the most important part of the plan to rebel against divinity. But now, before working with the Platinum Monarch, Beck needs to find a way to protect himself and Haru. Then he will have an excellent safety net in the person of this girl. According to Miori, at the moment their enemy is the tower, and not simple parasites. To win, you need a monster that can absorb stars. Ho Ming took Haru to live with him in the castle to look after her. Kang Ha was not happy with this situation because she would live in his room. But there was nothing to do, since the executioner doll gave advice to keep her nearby, since Shadow Hand still rested in her. A guard ran into the hunter's room and said that Geomuk was looking for them. The guys learned that the tower had begun to move. The monarch, having completed her retirement, was ready to see what she was capable of. The hunters rushed headlong towards Geomuku, but they were stopped by the lady's secretary. He gave them important information. The hunters ran to the office where all the available masters of the city had gathered. The monarch was ready to begin the meeting since everyone was now assembled. But then, the master of the Order of Alchemists, Hani, came forward with a statement that the master of the order was not in place. To which the monarch instead introduced everyone to the master of the Order of Wealth, Ten Fingers. The monarch gave orders to the director of the Astronomical Observatory to tell the reason for the meeting. The director began her story that the constellations began to move, and for unknown reasons a massive restructuring took place in the tower. The information that was collected about the floors traversed has become irrelevant and must now be destroyed. The master of alchemy was discouraged by this fact because a lot of time and resources were spent collecting information. Next, the monarch wanted to hear about the situation with the established points. The director reported that the 10th floor stronghold was in order, but contact with the 20th floor had been lost, and most likely the points were destroyed during perestroika. Those gathered were annoyed because this had never happened since the foundation of the tower. The monarch asked the director of the Tombstone Library whether it was possible to predict this incident. The answer was negative. No one could have expected this. The monarch summed up the above that since this has never happened, then there is no action plan either. Gilmuk was outraged because he had already climbed the tower without a clear plan. The monarch explained that now they have less money and resources and also do not have a common goal that would unite everyone. Taking into account all of the above, the monarch decided to introduce martial law, according to which it was forbidden for anyone to act against the will of the ruler. The monarch also planned to convince city residents to help clear the tower and direct all resources to this matter. Next, the monarch asked the director to get one mysterious bag. It contained the corpses of traitors, among whom was the district master. Thus, the ruler wanted to show what would happen to those who decided to betray her. Due to the death of the district master, Ten Fingers was appointed in his place. Kung Ha thought that at one time the former district master went against the ruler, and that's why he was killed. Now the Circle Guild is completely under the control of the monarch. Now the monarch wanted to make sure that everyone agreed with the introduction of martial law. The Alchemist Order expressed their agreement as long as the monarch kept his promise to them not to interfere in their affairs. Geomuk clarified about the monarch's desire to sacrifice the entire city for the sake of clearing the tower. 
to which I received the answer that for the sake of this, the monarch was ready to sacrifice even her entire soul. Gyomuk had no choice but to agree to. The tombstone observatory was not even asked, since they were created to help the city and the mistress. Kung Ha reasoned that since all the masters agreed, then no one else would go against the monarch. Next from the monarch came an order for the hunters to deal with the remaining traitors. Remark. Last time, when the hunters were stopped by the lady's secretary, he gave them a list of people who, by order of the monarch, needed to be dealt with. Kang Ha and Ho Min got to work, and now the monarch was ready to try to clear the tower. At this time, house and murder of people was happening in the city. Paladins, led by the executioner doll, arrived to protect civilians. One of the paladins told the doll that the monarch, having received support from the heads of the guilds, gives the order to shut up all traitors. That martial law has been introduced and all resources have been redirected to clearing the tower. That several guild heads were eliminated and ten fingers became the master of the orders. The news he heard angered the executioner doll. The doll reasoned that once all the guilds stood up to defend the city, the city would finally return to its former status. But just a few days ago, the city was full of discord that even the monarch was worried. But now everything is different, since most of the traitors have been killed. Now, no one will dare to stand in the way of the monarch. And in such a situation, when the tower was in chaos, the monarch decided to unite people under the slogan, Cleanse the Tower. Now the squad of paladins no longer knows how to exist. The doll was upset because it was being used as just another puppet. Two days after the events began, the tower ceased to be in chaos. During this time, the monarch mobilized the forces of the masters and captured the city. According to rumors, the spider as the only competitor of the platinum monarch was killed. The monarch announced a new set of rules. Dedicate all resources to clearing the tower. Everyone who has reached the age of 19 must receive a seal. Ho Ming read the new rules that now any adult with combat skills will be promoted to the rank of hunter. That all orders from the monarch are a priority for hunters. Ho Min was not very happy with the new rules, but Kang Ha explained to him that the situation in the city required this. Communication with the stronghold on the 20th floor was lost, and now everyone is afraid of the unknown. And so the monarch redirected this fear to the tower. Huo Ming was lost in thought. He found it strange that the changes in the tower and the betrayal happened at the same time. In the subconscious world, the One and Miori discussed the monarch's actions. Miori was convinced that now the Platinum Monarch would use everyone and everything to clear the tower. Miori concluded that when she was Bekho Min, it was for this reason that the monarch used her to achieve her demise. But according to the memoirs of the One and Only, the monarch fought to the end in every situation between life and death. For Miori, it was important to find out whether it was true that the One was going to rebel alone against divinity. She saw through his plan that the One, when he learned about the monarch's intentions, decided to protect everyone. However, he realized that doing something with the constellations alone was an impossible task for others, and he decided to begin implementing the plan alone. Miori was sure that the One had climbed to a higher level of the tower than her or even reached the top, but why he was now at the bottom was a question for her, to which the One did not answer. However, now both constellations were unhappy with Beck, because he didn't even know how to use the assessment skill. The only one reason that if Beck decided to go beyond the limits of the assessment, then the tower itself would kill him. Then, in this case, Miori will have to help him, because she can distinguish truth from lies, and this will help make Beck smarter. After the monarch captured the entire city, the first thing she did was rescue the hunters locked on the 20th floor. While they were saving some, others did not notice how they became slaves. Suppressing everyone who posed a danger, the monarch sent the gunsmiths to the guild. Having received another love letter from the monarch, Ho Min asked the constellations if they were satisfied with this alignment of events. Everyone liked it, and when the light came from Miori, Beck felt as if he had been pushed on the shoulder. Having met with the monarch on the next date, as promised, the ruler was supposed to talk about the uprising. Ho Ming remembered the words that he had been told that when he heard about the uprising, he could decide for himself whether to kill the monarch or not. Before starting a conversation about the uprising, the monarch decided to tell a little about herself. She told Huo Ming that during the strife compared to the Church of Eternity, she was a little girl. Therefore, they came up with a mysterious and calm image of the monarch in order to capture the minds of people. 
To survive, she had to behave like a monarch. Sitting under the flakes of snow, she reasoned that she did not deserve to have such a title. And the main problem is that under her rule, the city cannot be united. Finally, the conversation turned to the uprising. So Ho Min learned that the plan was to unite people not under the banner of the monarch, but with the idea of conquering the tower. Everything was planned from the moment the head of the Church of Eternity was killed. Rebellion against divinity was a plan to unite the city. Therefore, everything that happened up to this moment, an uprising in the city, rumors of treason, assassination attempt on the Platinum Monarch, revealing the identities of traitors, it was all her, the Monarch. It dawned on Beck that she was the spider too. She had a spider mask, but the spider was the one who wore this mask and he was never one person. Miori liked it, thereby confirming the Monarch's words. In addition to searching for traitors and instigators of treason, the Monarch used the mask to control the city. She controlled the city because it was slowly dying. When the tower was first discovered, the planet's population was about 10 million. Time passed and areas suitable for life were replaced by wastelands where death ruled, so more and more people were drawn to the tower. It was a wonderful time when heroes reached out to the tower with the support of people. Everyone wanted to return to peaceful days. The current population is approximately 150,000. After a long series of defeats, everyone lost the will to fight. Even the constellations turned away from the original. After listening to all this, Beck reminded her that he had given her a promise that he could forgive her once and not kill her. The monarch asked why he should forgive her, because Beck was sure that she was in love with him. The monarch was surprised by what she heard, but admitted that she never wanted to harm Beck. And now that her feelings have been revealed, she must follow the path of monarchs and protect the people close to her, not allowing them to make wrong decisions. Having thanked him for everything, she removed Beck from the post of Hunter of the Ruler. While packing his things, Beck enjoyed the freedom, because now he didn't have to follow orders, and he was free from obligations. Seeing the doll and Kang Ha, he did not want to say goodbye to them because they were soon to meet in the tower. When he left, Ho Min could not believe that it was all over, that there were no more elders or master. But for some reason, he felt like he had lost something. Walking down the street and enjoying the freedom, Beck saw a familiar face in the crowd. This was the unknown one who came for Huo Ming to finally end his life. Such threats were no longer scary for Beck, because he had a spider mask. The unknown woman could not believe that Beck could be a spider and told her people to kill him quickly. Huo Ming activated his demonic beast skill. The unknown woman was angry that Beck was using strong skills this time too. Haru, also possessed by shadow hands, came to Beck's aid. It was difficult for the unknown woman to believe that Beck was a spider because she was sure that the spider was a woman. Then Beck began to attack the unknown. Beck's movements made unknown believe that there was a spider in front of her. Now they decided to get to know each other better. Unknown's real name was Yong Hua. Beck immediately asked Yong if she killed the anglerfish, to which he immediately received the answer, no. Constellation Miori confirmed her answer with a like. According to Yong Hua, this could have been done by a group that joined in the murder of the monarch. Only people, along with the constellations, can imitate the behavior of the unknown. So they used an awl to make sure all suspicion fell on Yonghua. There was not a single hunter in this group who could kill the platinum monarch. Thanks to her failed assassination plans, the monarch was able to advance the rebellion against the deity. By combining all this information, Yonghua stated that the group was helping the monarch. After Yong Hua told everything she knew, she was interested in Beck's plans. Having recognized them, she would like to continue with him because she saw what he was good for. After all, Beck was able to kill all the legs of the spider, took the shadow beast under control. He took the platinum circuits and the spider mask for himself. Beck found this suspicious. He expected that the unknown would be angry with him, but she, seeing a good chance, immediately decided to switch sides. Beck had a plan. He wanted to steal the tower steal the rebellion against divinity from the monarch and take possession of the top of the tower. Beck believed that this was his only chance, while the tower was in the process of dialogue. Kang Ha now had a new friend in Yu Hu, who followed him around and asked a bunch of questions. Kang Ha told her that the monarch promised to fix the elevator and strengthen several hunting objects, build a camp so that they could live peacefully in the tower. No matter how much Kang Ha loved Beck Ho Min, now he was sad without him and didn't even know where he had gone. Well, since Haru also disappeared, that means they left together, Kang Ha thought. Yu Hu, as if reading his thoughts, broke the news that Baek Ho Min had been kicked out. 
Kong Ha couldn't believe it, so he immediately decided to ask the monarch directly. No matter how bad Bake may be according to Kang Ha, he could become an outstanding, excellent dog. The monarch needed a dog that she could beat at least as many times as possible, and Beck was not such a dog. He had secrets, and even climbed to the same level as the monarch. So the only solution was to kick Beck out. But Kang Ha was sure that the ruler got rid of him because the dynamite constellation was with him. Kang Ha said what he thinks about this. One day, Beck touched the diagram of Kang Ha's eye, and then Kong felt the presence of many constellations, not just one. And for a moment, Kang Ha felt that their schemes converged. Beck's constellation dynamite was well-versed in alchemy, but the martial arts that Beck demonstrated, the ability to repair the platinum circuit, the ability to decorate shadow beasts, proved that his constellation could do anything. Kang Ha concluded that Beck has a superior constellation. The monarch liked the term superior constellation so much that she suggested spreading the word about it. The rumor that the result of huge constellations that have appeared recently is called dynamite. This superior constellation is trying to guide humanity to the top of the tower from the upper levels. The monarch believed that thanks to this rumor, people would gain hope, and the constellations provoked by the new term would begin to act. In addition, the constellation dynamite can hear this and run to the top of the tower. The rumor spread very quickly. All people talked about was the superior constellation. The rumor reached Baek Ho Min. He decided that before anything happened, he needed to hurry up and climb the tower. In the subconscious world, the One was furious that the monarch had spread such a rumor, also about dynamite, and not about him. Miori concluded that in this way the monarch was hurrying Beck to the tower. The warlike king reasoned that now Beck would be the center of attention, and it was unclear whether this was good or bad. Miori added that Monarch has prepared all the conditions for the emergence of a new star, Beck Ho Min. In her opinion, if he suddenly wants to hide his identity, he can wear a spider mask. Beck finally returned to the tower. Passing by the Beck Expedition Group, I remembered Kang Ha, who at one time was a member of it. He's probably pretty high up in the tower now. Ho Min was in company with Ha Yan, they identified an informant among the members of the expedition group. So they managed to find out that the first group was organized exclusively from hunters from the atelier. There is a possibility that the Platinum Monarch separated the experienced group members from the ordinary hunters. Beck's solution was to follow the first group and climb the tower at the end. The list with the members of the first group included names like Kang Ha, Yu Ha, and Keo Muk, the leader of the expedition group. Ha Yon said that Kyo Muk climbed above the 50th floor and that, given the current situation, they would only run after the first group. Kang Ha and his company arrived on the 15th floor. After exploring the area, he was informed that there was an estate that had been moved here due to structural degeneration and was called the Ghost Estate. Kang Ha's plan was to investigate structural degeneration and look for survivors. Kang Ha and his team prepared to search the estate for survivors. Suddenly the dead and another dead centipede appeared. There were a huge number of dead people and it was as if they were under someone's command. Before the mayhem began, the dead made an offer to Kang Ha and his people. They wanted to get rid of the building, which contained something unpleasant in the opinion of the tower and the constellations. Upon fulfilling this instruction, the dead promised to receive a star. The offer was attractive, but Kang Ha needed proof of trust. The dead man replied that the constellation of the Black Ghost would witness this promise. It seemed that Kang Ha was about to agree, but this was a delusion since he had never negotiated with the dead. So I loaded my spear into one of them. Since the dead were refused, they had to rush into battle with Kang Ha's team. Kang Ha began receiving messages that the Black Ghost constellation was giving him a curse. But Kang Ha could not be bribed with this, and he recklessly rushed into battle. Once on the 11th floor, Beck met an unfamiliar dead man. The dead man had a proposal for Beck. In order to talk about the proposal, the dead man teleported Beck to another place. In front of them stood an overturned building. The dead man said that they want to get rid of the unpleasant thing inside this building. In exchange, they promise Beck a star. Of course, Beck doubted such a proposal because the black ghost tried to kill him many times. He decided to ask the constellations for advice and received unanimous likes. But Homin set his own conditions. Until Ho Min received the star, he could not be attacked or betrayed, and also demanded that he be given the teleportation skill. The dead man in turn mentioned that Kang Ha rejected the offer. It was strange for Ho Ming that Kang Ha did this, because all of Beck's constellations agreed. The deal was completed. 
The constellation of the Black Ghost served as trust as a witness to this promise. Beck received a message that the Black Ghost was providing a test to destroy the heartbeat that spun the tower on the second stairs. Huo Ming knew that hunters received tests such as destroying the heartbeat from time to time. The most famous challenges are those given by the tower. When five stars are collected, then the tower gives the hunters their first test as a constellation. If they pass this test, they receive their own signature weapon, which identifies them as a constellation. Only the tower can designate someone as a constellation. Ho Ming was ready to go inside to perform the test, but he wanted to take the dead man with him. The dead man found a reason not to go, for example, that there was no light in this building, without which he could not exist. But this was not a reason for an excuse, so Haru had to blow his head off, and the three of them headed into the building. In the subconscious world, the constellations discussed that such a test from the dark ghost was very unusual. They knew that such tests were usually given by Yun Sul. Entering the building, it became clear that it was turned upside down both outside and inside. When Ho Ming began to touch any objects, the building began to change again from the inside. He and Haru were being thrown in different directions, but he didn't understand how to stop these changes. It was as if there was some pattern he had to figure out. Ho Ming began to touch random objects, and everything started anew. The building changed again and again from the inside. Beck had no other solution on how to activate the memory target dynamite skill. Huo Ming knew that although the alchemy workshop was known as a medical workshop, it also dealt with physics, chemistry, and biology. And dynamite was more of an engineer than a doctor. The skill took effect, and from Dynamite's point of view, the building looked superb, with everything laid out on the shelves. Now Beck understood where he should go. They had to break the red column, break the mirror, dodge everything that falls on them. And finally the building stopped changing, as if it had lost its central column. Dynamite was able to find the only problem in the layout and destroy it. In the subconscious world, the one was dissatisfied with the work done by Dynamite. The only one was sure that Dynamite could understand the layout of the ghostly manor and find the way to the right room, but he decided to deal with the problems of the design and destroy it. Ho Ming found the heart of the estate. If you follow the example of Dynamite, then you need to destroy everything around the building, and then there will be a single undamaged room. By activating the Lord of Swords, Beck destroyed the heart, after which the head of the dead man said that this was not all, and there were eleven more hearts left to destroy when suddenly the building began to move, thereby trying to return the destroyed heart. Beck couldn't stand still because he could die. He remembered the teleporter that the dead man used. But the dead man's head made it clear that this time she would only use it on herself. Beck did not intend to let his head go alone. The head warned that if Beck wanted to use the shadow step, he would lose his hand. Suddenly a like came from the one, thereby letting him know that he had already deceived the dark ghost. In this case, Huo Ming activated the memories of the One. Her head screamed with rage that they wanted to steal the Dark Ghost's blessing from her without even knowing about the side effects. But for Beck, it was important to survive now. After the manipulation, Beck stopped feeling anything. It seemed as if he had died. Finally, Beck managed to wake up. What happened to him was a side effect. The head said that when a person loses control over their feelings, they unknowingly harm their own body, and when they try to get them back, they are likely to get hurt. The head did not have such side effects since the dark ghost himself bestowed this blessing. Now Huo Ming was wondering where they ended up this time. Realizing where they were, the dark ghost got angry and took his blessing from the dead man's head. Beck didn't understand why the one brought him to this particular place. After examining the area, Beck and Haru realized from the sand that this was not just a desert. Instead of sand, there was bone dust of the dead, metal fragments, and even gold dust. It was a graveyard of the dead, a place where the dead come after they have lost control of their body. Now Beck understood why the constellations tried to convince him to agree to this test. They wanted to use the dark ghost's blessing to bring him to this place. Haru and Ho Min were poisoned to collect gold. In the subconscious world, the constellations were glad that he had found this place, and Dynamite decided to intervene, because not only gold could be found there. An hour later, the guys managed to collect two handfuls of gold worth 200 million. Rare equipment was also found. Knives, swords, scimitar. In his hands, Beck held the first relic-level weapon, a metal chain that became longer when you pulled it. Its name is the Phantom Flame Genocide. 
One of the functions of this chain was to explode the collected gunpowder. Beck decided to try it, but the cost of using this weapon was its energy. Beck thought that this was not very scary, since energy could be replenished with drugs from Dynamite's mini-laboratory. Suddenly, he remembered that he could do one thing that he learned about when he looked through Dynamite's point of view. Dynamite in the subconscious world said that Beck was engaged in the production of explosives. The Phantom Flame Genocide is a weapon that requires ammunition, and if the chain is loaded with explosives, all chains will have a powerful effect. Dynamite was glad that he had created a multifunctional biochemical explosive. Thus, Beck created five gray, three red, and one white explosives. He decided to test their effect and start with the gray ones. The chain absorbed the explosives and changed its color to gray. But Beck didn't want to use the chain just like that because so much time had been spent on making explosives. Confused about where to go next, Beck received likes from the constellations which suggested the path. The battle against the dead was in full swing. One of the dead distracted Kang Ha. He said that the uprising was over and the forgotten and deferred punishments of people from the past would arise again. Listening to this, Kang Ha did not understand the meaning of these words. The dead man continued to say that the hearts supporting the twisting of the tower and the twisting part of the tower returned to the chase. Now Kang Ha realized that the hearts were needed to complete the tower and the dead set their sights on destroying them. In order to find out more information, Kang Ha needed to grab one of the Forgotten Ones and ask Komuk to interrogate him. But the Black Ghost began to emerge from the dead man with the goal of killing Kang Ha. Suddenly the dead man was blown up. It was Ho Min who came to the rescue with his chain and saved Kang Ha. During the conversation, Kang Ha learned that Beck accepted the Dark Sign test. He was angry because now Beck could not kill the Dark Ghost's subordinates. Kang Ha said that if you break promises with the constellation, it may be angry with him. Their conversation was interrupted by Yu Ha with the message that they managed to defeat the dead. In Kang Ha's ear, Yu Ha conveyed a message from Mr. Ko Muk. Now they had to hurry. On the way, the guys discussed Beck's situation after the accepted offer of the Dark Ghost. Kang Ha suggested that he call a magician or priest to cancel this proposal before Bayek began to destroy hearts. But Beck admitted that he had already destroyed one. Kang Ha now realized why the number of dead had increased. These were the consequences of Ho Min's actions. Huo Ming couldn't understand why the ghost would create a problem out of the destruction of hearts if they could be destroyed by magicians. Kang Ha tried to answer this question. In his opinion, regardless of the circumstances, all ascended constellations are irritated by the current situation. The entangled tower impedes the flow between the constellations. The Dark Ghost probably thought this was quite an important matter and took it into his own hands. In this case, Kang informed Ho Min that he would need to get rid of the remaining hearts. He already had experience visiting this estate. From experience, he doubted that Buck could pass the test himself. He was sure that Dynamite helped him with this. Ho Ming saw no point in hiding and confirmed this assumption. This fact made Dynamite's talent even more surprising, because he helped Ho Ming without thinking about what others would think of him. In Kang Ha's version, Dynamite focuses on helping the people within the tower without worrying about his reputation, one of the few hunters who has truly changed. Dynamite was happy to hear such words about himself. Kang Ha assumed that if such a constellation helps Bake, then he sees hope in him. Ho Min was surprised why Kang Ha was so interested in the Dynamite constellation. And Kang Ha said that it is wonderful when it is possible to communicate with the constellations and that many hunters dream of this. This prompted Ho Ming to once again remember how many times Dynamite helped and saved him. Ho Min decided to share with Kang Ha that he doesn't really have communication with the constellations, but that they can only send one message, the meaning of which Beck deciphers himself. This angered Kang Ha and he reminded him of the existence of the Ouija board. Before moving on, the guys decided to rest, and Kang Ha decided to talk about the Ouija board in more detail. The Ouija board is an ancient shamanic item. It was used to summon ghosts and communicate with them. And Kang Ha suggested that Ho Min contact his constellation and ask a question. The conditions were simple. Put your finger on the board, ask a question and slowly move your finger. And when the constellation sends a message, the letter of the word will be known, and then the entire sentence itself. Beck had already tried a similar method, but he always ignored these options. Beck's attitude was to trust his own judgment and not depend on others even if the choice was difficult. What Beck liked most was receiving likes from his constellations. It was like a sign of support and kindness. Because when he was an orphan, 
he never received support from others. If it now turns out that likes from constellations have other meanings, then Beck will simply lose hope in himself. Kang Ha understood why Beck was afraid to receive messages from the constellations, but he convinced him that hunters are just gears that move according to a plan. But if you really find out what the constellations want, the pressure will be colossal. Kang Ha said that he was also torn between the lady and many constellations, since there were constellations that hated the lady. Kang Ha concluded that ignorance is not a wall that protects, but a cage in which you yourself are locked, so you need to take a step forward. Baek agreed with Kang Ha's words and decided to ask his first question to the constellations. The constellations were happy with this outcome of events. Thanks to Kang Ha, things could speed up. But then the constellations were confused and did not know what to answer Ho Ming. Finally, the answer was received. The constellations said that they were Beck's past. Having received an incomprehensible message from the constellations, the guys decided to ask something unambiguous. But for no reason, the earth began to shake. The seals on Huo Ming's hand began to heat up, even though he was not using his abilities. In the subconscious world, the constellations also felt this shakeup. The only one who understood what was going on. It was the tower that noticed their communication with Beck. This happened suddenly because they started using the Ouija board. The only one admitted that he thought about such an outcome of events and came up with solutions in advance, but he was not sure that anything would work. He knew that the tower would try to get rid of the constellations since they had been causing problems lately. Everyone was afraid to die again, but the one promised to take care of them. The only one knew that they had to pay for coming into direct contact with Beck. Dynamite was panicking. He realized that the more they got into this, the more they would have to pay. The only one confirmed Dynamite's opinion and was going to use this to negotiate with the tower. Everyone was shocked by what was happening. It was like a curse. Beck decided to use the seal to check what happened. The only one chose a new life. I felt that the seal was very sick. Taking off his glove and looking at it, he saw that it was damaged. He was afraid that at this rate his constellations would disappear. But at this time, the one was shamanizing over the seal, after which the seal completely changed its appearance. The earth immediately stopped shaking. Huo Ming received a notification that he had never seen before. It said that Miori was giving a test to kill the fallen star Taboo. Ho Ming was at a loss as to why the message came from Miori and who Taboo was anyway. All constellations except Miori sent alike. This also aroused Ho Ming's suspicions. The subconscious world also stopped shaking. Now the one could give tasks to Beck Ho Min. Everyone knows that constellations can give hunters tests and tasks. In this way, it is possible to atone for the debt that Beck's subconscious world received for communicating with him. The only one who managed to reach an agreement with the tower, and now Beck will pay off the debt. Now the constellations will be able to give him tests, but of course the tower will ask for more. And while the constellations give tasks, Miori cannot be chosen as the chosen life while completing them. For Beck Homin, the fallen star is an important sacrifice, whose death means the end of his world. He will resist this, as he will constantly experience pain and suffer. The fallen stars used to shine very strongly in the sky, but having lost their integrity, they fell to the ground, and now they cannot be considered people or parasites. They are animals that have lost starlight. These are creatures muttering curses. They kill everyone who gets in their way, be it people or parasites. The fallen stars pray fervently for the destruction of the tower and the world, which is why they are also called apocalypse beasts. The only one believes that the tower sent Beck the fallen star taboo as a test. The dead have risen again. Kong Ha ordered his army to leave the 18th floor and quickly move to the 19th. The constellations, seeing the situation in which Beck found himself, were unhappy and turned to the tower with indignation. In order to get to the tower, it was necessary to clear the path from the dead. Ho Ming decided to speed up this process with the help of new weapons he had. He attached the knife to the chain and threw it to Kang Ha. Kang Ha was required to throw this knife straight into the tower. Kang Ha was not ready for this, but at Ho Min Wu's request, he decided to take the risk. And he succeeded. The knife stuck into the wall of the tower. Since the knife was on a chain and there were explosives in the chain, Ho Min was able to organize an explosion. Thus, the path to the tower was cleared of the dead. But Ho Min didn't rejoice for long. He felt pain. And then weakness. This was the price for using the skill. But Kang Ha did not abandon his friend in trouble, but by throwing him on his back, he saved him from the dead running after them. 
Dynamite rejoiced with happiness that his pre-prepared explosives worked. Kang Ha and Ho Min arrived on the 19th floor of the temporary barracks. Ho Ming was passed out. One of the hunters ran into the tent and reported that the master was waiting for him at the meeting where all the members of the first expedition team had gathered. At the meeting it was said that the advanced detachments were the first to reach the third level, but upon discovering the distortion of the tower, they immediately returned. So they don't know what happened to the haunted mansion. The situation on the third floor is not so bad and one of the stars wants to help them. Kang Ha was pleased with this news because if everyone died on the 20th floor, the city would be in a terrible situation. The master reported that recently the pulsating hearts that suppressed the tower were destroyed. Initially, there were nine of them. There is only one reason for all this. The tower decided to wake up from a long sleep. In other words, the tower can extract pulsating hearts whenever it wants. But the pulsating hearts caused resistance, and because of this, the dead buried underground crawl out. One of the alchemists claims that their number is 148,000. The advanced troops and hunters who have passed the third level assume that there are about 130,000 of them. That is, each of the hunters will have to fight with a thousand. The master said that now the number is not the worst thing. More terrible than the beast of the apocalypse is taboo, which follows them. Everyone understood that the beast of the apocalypse was a fallen star named Taboo. It is terrifying that a person who once guided people from heaven can suddenly become fallen. The master said that seven years ago he personally subjugated Taboo, but was not completely able to get rid of it, so he was able to escape underground. When Kang Ha returned to the tent, Ho Min had already regained consciousness. Kang Ha told what the master said about Taboo. Ho Ming remembered that the test that Miori gave him was to kill the fallen star Taboo. Kang Ha decided to tell Ho Min the story about the fallen star. During the Blue-White War, countless constellations arose and Taboo was among them. He was one of the few who was associated with the alchemy workshop. It was then that Taboo ascended by the hands of the Oracle Star. According to Kang Ha, it would be better for Taboo to remain a star in the sky and lead those who wished to follow in his footsteps. Less than a year after Taboo's death, he lost his title and became a fallen star. Even though he ascended, mortal values were important to him, and so he paid for it. Kang Ha heard that Taboo was eccentric. He was interested in the essence of the tower, not in conquering it. He tried to find blind spots in the rules established by the tower and find out the boundaries of what is permitted in order to understand whether the authority of the tower is absolute. Concluding his story, Kang Ha said that Taboo was both intrigued and obsessed with everything forbidden. Even if Taboo was stripped of his star title, Huo Ming doubted his strength to fight him. Kang Ha told the good news. If Ho Min can defeat Taboo, he will receive a star, since fallen stars are those who have fallen out of favor at the tower. So at one time the executioner Dal received a star. Huo Ming thought that in this case he would already have two stars. Kang Ha shared the news from the Platinum Monarch with the Master. The monarch will not be able to send a second expeditionary group to help, since all the elevators are broken. She also ordered to go up to the 20th floor after she managed to deal with Taboo. Khan suggested that if the fallen star also hated parasites, then it could unite with humans. To which the master replied that a fallen star does not have to hate parasites. All fallen stars despise the tower. They want to destroy it. The reason is that love often goes hand in hand with hate. Therefore, hunters... When they climb a tower, adore it. But when the tower does not allow them to reach the top, they hate it. The ideal outcome of everything that is happening now, according to the master, is if the parasites and taboo destroy each other. But this will not happen, so everyone needs to be prepared. Their conversation was interrupted by the news that something terrible had happened. News that Beck went alone to fight the fallen star taboo. He went to fight without any strategy or plan of action. Kang Ha tried to stop him. But Beck stood his ground. Beck was full of strength to fight the dead. He decided not to call upon the constellations for help until he encountered Taboo. Kung Ha wasn't going to go help Ho Min. He didn't want to risk the lives of other hunters. Huo Ming's arm should already be burning from using the sword, but the heat spread throughout his body, making his movement stronger. At first, Beck thought that this was all training from the teacher, because he promised that he would show how to make the skills your own. Beck also noticed that after the transformation of the seal, using the Master of Ten Thousand Swords became much easier. Beck didn't know what happened to his seal, but he was grateful to the one. 
the only one actually made the gift from the seal spread throughout Huo Ming's entire body. The one in the Martial King discussed that Huo Min was developing very rapidly, but could die if he recklessly rushed into battle. The only one believed that if Beck ran away now, he would not be able to take what was on the upper floors. But now the constellations were more concerned about how Kong Ha would act in this situation, because if there is no help, Ho Min will simply die. Kong Ha decided that he couldn't help Bake this time. Suddenly, Kong Ha realized that Ho Min and Tabu's battle had somehow managed to change the course of events. He had a request to the master. Knowing in advance that the master would refuse her, he, being a confidant of the Platinum Monarch, ordered him to gather an army and go to the aid of Beck. No matter how much the master wanted to resist, it was an order from a higher rank, and he began to carry it out. He urged the hunters to subdue this fallen star and be ready to attack. Kong Ha knew that Beck really needed help now, and that he deliberately risked his life to drag Kong Ha into all this. While fighting the dead, Beck dreamed of one thing. If only Kong Ha would help him, and his dream came true. He saw the hunters killing the dead and heard the master command it. Now Ho Min's plans were to get away from the battlefield along with Haru. Seeing Haru Beck fight, he thought that her shadow beast was taking shape and becoming stronger, and it was all because she was fighting a lot. Then Beck felt his shadow beast in the belt begin to tremble due to Haru's energy. Haru ate one of the dead and became even much stronger. Thanks to the strength and energy with which Haru killed, a breeze was created that helped Ho Ming's seal to quickly cool down. But on the other hand, Bake's warmth reduced the power of Haru's shadow beast. This means that Haru would face retribution for using the shadow beast, just like Ho Ming for the seal. Ho Min voiced Haru's plan that had matured in him. Those hunters, led by the master who came to the rescue, will now become bait so that Beck can cut off Taboo's head. The master, using his abilities, killed a sufficient number of dead people with one blow. The dead flew like splinters. The master warned Kang Ha that the meeting with Taboo could have different outcomes. It is even possible that the master will not be able to defeat him. Kang Ha understood this and relied on Ho Min's plan, which he did not know. Kang Ha became very angry when he realized that Ho Min was not at the battle site. The master suggested Ho Min left, that he was now on his own. But Kang Ha did not intend to retreat and continued to move forward. Finally, Tabu was spotted among the heap of dead people, and the master gave the order to attack. Tabu owned very good weapons. Having fired from it, a powerful explosion occurred. It was a terrible, dangerous weapon, an insane stove, a tank. Kang Ha understood that if the master was not nearby, they would be destroyed in a matter of seconds. Ho Ming's plan was to attack Tabu from behind, so in his opinion, they could save the expedition group. Suddenly, Beck noticed that the dead around him had frozen. At that moment, the forgotten dead man approached him and ordered him to leave here, since Ho Ming had more important things to do. The Forgotten One was ready to clear the way for Beck so he could take the star. This aroused Beck's suspicions. It's strange that the dead man wanted to help him, and he did not intend to trust someone who aroused suspicion. To which the dead man replied that in this case, he would have to fight alone, and then this test would not end in the best way for him. He would miss the chance to take the star. But Huo Ming didn't think so. He was determined to destroy the two beating hearts in order to take possession of the star. The dead man said that one beating heart belongs to Tab, and it is an important part of his stove. Ho Ming decided to ask the constellations for advice on whether the dead man was telling the truth. This turned out to be true, the one confirmed it with a like. Ho Ming agreed to the dead man's proposal. When Ho Min headed towards Tab, the Forgotten One cleared his path of the dead. Suddenly, Ho Ming heard the voice of Kyo Muk and saw two constellations firing at each other. For Ho Ming, this seemed like a chance to stealthily attack Tabu while he was busy fighting the master. Ho Ming climbed into Tabu's tank and intended to unnoticedly open his throat. But it was not to be. Tabu heard him and pointed his weapon at him. To understand what to do, Ho Min activated the collection of memories from Dynamite. Dynamite was in Tabu's laboratory. Tabu was an engineering expert, and Dynamite had a desire to study all this too. Tabu opened fire. Huo Ming had no choice but to dodge the bullets. The bombardment from Tabu stopped, and the master gave the order to everyone to run to his tank. From Dynamite's memories, Ho Min learned that his constellation knew the anatomy of Tabu. Ho Ming used his explosive chain. Beck was sure that now everything would end, when suddenly I felt a knife blow. It was the black ghost in the face of a dead man. He couldn't let Huo Ming take over the star. 
Huo Ming was only a mediator and now he has become useless. The black ghost broke his promise and therefore lost the star. The dead man was ready to give the blessing from the black ghost, since now it was no longer needed. The dead man had already destroyed one ghost star. Now he wanted to kill Ho Ming along with Tabu. But this was not so easy to do, since Ho Ming had an assistant, Haru, who killed this creature. Tabu began to make a speech. He said that the tower was collapsing, that three meteorites would crash into the tower and lead to its destruction. And when the huge wormwood grows, a bitter rain will fall and wash away all the dirt from the city. Having heard enough of this nonsense, Beck was ready to tighten the chain around Tabu's neck and kill him. In his last words, Tabu said that Huo Ming would now have to look for a successor. That was the end of it. Beck was glad that he managed to do this. But it seemed to him that this was not the end. It was not easy to kill Tabu, he was still alive. He also fired at Ho Min. Haru managed to make a shelter from bullets for her and Ho Min. Ho Ming felt that Tabu had become more fierce, and it was impossible to hide from his bullets. Ho Ming received a message about increasing synchronization with dynamite and now any option could be chosen. Beck chose to choose the right memories. Tabu did not stop. He was sure that all of Ho Ming's attempts to win were useless. But Ho Ming managed to climb into the inside of the tank. Dynamite, knowing how the tank works, helped Ho Ming figure out the muzzle of this car. Now the barrel was pointed at Tabu himself. By pulling the necessary wires, Tabu's death was close. And boom, everything worked out. Tank and Tabu were killed. The master and Kang Ha could not understand the reason for the destruction of the tank. Beck was not sure that when the tank exploded, his beating heart was also destroyed. Dynamite was strong due to his memories, unlike Tabu, who relied on his beating heart. The fallen stars have lost their light and therefore cannot use their powers as before. But Tabu was not strong enough to distort the tower. After receiving the heart, he finally gained his body and control of the tank. Therefore, Ho Min decided to end Tabu forever, and he thrust his sword into him. Still fighting the dead, Kang Ha noticed Ho Min. The master realized that they were all bait so that Beck could stealthily attack Tabu. The master was not angry with Beck. He thanked him for finally finishing this matter, and as a sign of his gratitude, he gave Beck his blessing. Beck did not expect this situation. He now possessed the blessing of strong will. This meant that the weapon would never slip out of his hands. The master looked at Tabu's corpse and said goodbye to him. Finally, Tabu's real funeral arrived. The dead began to surround the army of hunters. Now all their attention was focused on them, since Tabu died. Suddenly all the dead froze, and a girl with a trident appeared, who said that she had come here at the request of the elder since he was disappointed in the parasites and their ability to cope with the tasks assigned. She didn't come here to fight the hunters. This girl's name was Sezigia. She was one of the four living constellations. Almost nothing is known about her since she never went down to the city after receiving her status. She appeared here because of the Black Ghost, although she does not care what is happening in the city. But the Elder turned out to be stupid and asked for help from the parasites, who deceived him by taking one star. Although Sizigi already knew that parasites could not be trusted, the master asked what the black ghost wanted now. Sizigi conveyed the ghost's wish. He wanted a better fate for humanity, namely to allow them to live as in the past. This meant returning to a time when the tower stood firm and impregnable. When humanity existed in harmony, the constellations rose and fell like stars. According to Sizigi, he wanted to bring back that boring and outdated way of life. But the master was sure that this was not the right path for humanity. This is just an invention of some cult of the past. Kang Ha added that those who oppose the tower will no longer be able to enjoy a peaceful life. They will simply die forgotten. But Sizigi insisted on giving a chance to those who want to climb the tower. Let them receive their star and become constellations. She was sure that there were those who wanted to calmly wait for their death, but for some reason everyone was so vehemently opposed to this. The master decided to ask Sizigi directly that she had come here to make sure that people could not climb the tower. The purpose of Sizigi's arrival was one, to convey the message of the black ghost. She assured that, unlike her elders, she values human life and is not going to kill anyone. Huo Ming could no longer listen to her words because she was lying. Sizigi was offended by these words because she did not consider herself a liar. Since Beck killed Tabu, Miori could again send him likes, and now she reported that Sizigi was lying. To prove the truth of his words, Beck asked Sizigi to swear on the stars. But Sizigi did not continue this conversation and taped Beck's mouth shut. 
She was glad to welcome a new constellation in the person of Ho Ming. She congratulated him on receiving the first star and promised to see him higher. And then she disappeared just as abruptly as she had appeared. The dead have come to life again. Everyone prepared for battle. Although they understood that there was absolutely no strength left, and the number of dead was huge, Kang Ha was ready to retreat, which he informed the master about. But according to the master, this was not necessary. The Executioner doll came to the scene of the battle with the paladins. The Executioner doll never fully trusted or obeyed. She always did what she thought was right. That's why she arrived here without telling the ruler about it. Something unusual began to happen. The dead began to disappear and the terrain began to change. The stars in the sky also began to rearrange themselves. The area has been rebuilt. The master suggested that it was most likely that the Platinum Monarch destroyed the last remaining pulsating heart, which is why these changes occurred. Huo Ming saw the looming walking shadow of the Black Ghost, but the ruler appeared before them. The Platinum Monarch thought that she would join the hunters later as she was dealing with issues related to the Black Ghost and beating hearts. But that was before she realized that all the pulsating hearts had been destroyed except one. She took it apart and immediately found herself here. Kang Ha asked if it means that the monarch will receive a star after destroying the last pulsating heart. Huo Ming was furious. After all, it was he who got rid of the strongest pulsating heart, and the platinum monarch only destroyed the last one. But laughing, the monarch explained that the tower could not bestow a star just because the beating hearts had been destroyed. Most likely, the Black Ghost meant that he would give up his star. So he did everything he could to prevent this. That's why he wanted to kill Beck when Huo Ming was so close to his goal. Then everyone began to praise Beck. The master told the monarch that Huo Ming managed to kill the fallen star and earn one. Yu Ha thought it was incredible. After all, he alone rushed into the crowd of the dead and reached the Beast of the Apocalypse to fight him. Other hunters insisted that he was incomparable, and that the super constellation dynamite really protected him. The monarch shared with Ho Ming that a hunter's prestige is tied to the reputation of the constellation that protects him. Therefore, dynamite's praise goes to Ho Ming too. Therefore, if Ho Ming becomes a constellation, then dynamite's good reputation will also be his achievement. In other words, Baek Ho Min will become a real superstar. Previously, Beck had only dreamed about this, but now he had already received one star. He was aiming to move on to become a superstar.